Uyi from Montor is feeling very happy and very uh, proud that we have been able to uh, take part in the process of organizing this uh, uh, August uh, gathering on the very important issue. Uh, the issue as the organizers has defined is that inclusive education to prevent intolerance and radicalism. And you know that um, education is the main way for upholding peace. It, uh, education is the way for uh, getting good people. Education is the key for creating tolerance in the society. Uh, uh, and that, what is that education? My question is this. Is the education in the schools? Is it the education in the universities? Or is it a cultural, natural education? Respecting people does not necessarily require go, go to the university. You, on the other hand, if you are from the university, it does not necessarily mean that you are you are respecting others, or you are you should be respected. It, it's it's a, it's a, education is something different to me, but still we have lots of education institutions. What that mean in terms of building peace, in terms of. Um, 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 uh, promoting human rights, rights to the women who are suppressed in society, rights to the children also. Um, uh, this is the question. So this is the today's uh, discussion issue is very important for me because we are some of the civil society people from Bangladesh and also from mostly from Indonesia are present here, and uh, I I'm seeing Professor. Dr. Azra, sir, welcome you to the event. Um, uh, good morning, sir. Assalamu alaikum, sir. And I have. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, beside me, I have uh, Professor Anisul Jaman, Dr. Anisul Jaman from Dhaka University. He's a very old follower of this peace process in, the, in this region. <laughs> and I also. To take that uh, opportunity to congratulate Ruby, who is physically here and um, he, she's um, attending a government organized peace conference in Bangladesh. And we are happy that she has uh, come up to Dhaka and to my office, to our office on tour. I welcome uh, Ruby and her team here. Uh, we have two other friends from Indonesia also. Um, we have Mr. Um, Ashraf Ali from Calcutta, in India. He's from Right Track. Right Track is a very <coughs> popular organization in India. Um, we have <coughs> Mr. Muhammad Ali, who is also the uh, treasurer of um, uh, Ontor Sala. and board member of Ontor. <coughs> Sorry. We have Mr. Ashraf Adin. Uh, he's from Clarion Collier. Clarion Collier. It's an online uh, um, channel, I think. In, or, yeah. Yeah. And we have many other friends. I have a lot of friends. Uh, all came also from Chakriya, from 200 miles from away from uh, Chakriya. Um, yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Dusna. Um, Tara, um, and also our friends online joining from Indonesia and other parts of Bangladesh also. So thank you very much for joining. So I, what I want to say is that I, at, at that outside of the meeting, I, uh, this webinar, I expect that the, uh, it's a good, good initiative. That initiative should be continued, this one thing. One shot will not work. There should not necessarily be works of there. Then we should have uh, lots of work, and already we have done a lots of work. Ruby is leading the peace and right, human rights process for the last 20 years. Also. We are friends for 15 years, I think, for the last 15 years. We have also Mohiddin, uh, um, Mohiddin Abdullah from Ontor. He's organizing on the part of the uh, webinar today from the part of Aman. So, what I want, I want, I hope that the uh, process will be successful, not the event is open, 
but the process you have started at Ruby, I think. Yes. And we are very happy that we should uh, uh, take forward the process. So one thing is that uh, Bangladesh, you know, is a uh, very populous country. We have lots of 170 million people um, with, us, with us. We have more than um, um, 50,000 educational centers, including, and we have lots of uh, uh, very good renowned universities, renowned in terms of or the subcontract at least. And Bangladesh education um, rate is growing. At the same time, we have lots of matrachas, Islamic mm -hmm. schools. These are huge, you cannot count it. I think that may be more than 100,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so totally you can say that Bangladesh is moving towards education and government is favoring the education process in the country. But what is happening? What is the outcome of this education uh, uh, in the country? We don't see that this education, increase of education institutions, increase of students, increase of teachers in the education centers, that not, does not necessarily create increase in the country. We cannot say that with the uh, increase of our education centers, we are safe in terms of peace and human rights. Rather, we are feeling a loss of threat to yeah. peace in the country. Peace, individual peace, yeah. crisis individual peace, peace in the families, mm -hmm. peace in the state level, country level. Mm -hmm. And the government is very much concerned in, in, in maintaining peace in our country. Yeah. So what is happening? What, how, what, what, is, what means? Education is growing. Also, yeah. our peace breaking, threat to peace is growing. Okay. So it's a very critical situation, I, I think. Mm -hmm. So we will have to get answers. The first answer is the people will make it. Peace is broken by people. Mm -hmm. We'll have to identify and we'll have to go to the cause why they are breaking. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to be very concerned about the, I, I also, uh, um, to me, it, it means that these people, okay, but the system itself mm -hmm. is, 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 is helping, in other words, is increase, inducing people to break the peace or, is, or establish peace. So role of civil society is very important, not necessarily students, not necessarily teachers, but the role of civil society. And who are civil society? I think, I think that every people who are voting their civil society part of civil society, mm -hmm. because peace breakers, not necessarily the educated people, they're also so-called educated people, also uneducated who have not, who have never gone to schools or universities. So peace, breaking of peace is everywhere, crisis of peace everywhere. So I think it's engaging people or establishing pieces is very important. Then how to engage people is very, very important. So I will call this August um, um, uh, gathering to start, uh, try for searching uh, uh, how we can go for peace. We have people who have education centers, then crisis is peace, how we can get. This is, the, uh, this is my call. Um, from Ontor, we'll be very happy <laughs> to continue to help this process. And you know, know that Ontor is a national level organization in the country. We have been working uh, physically in, in almost 10 districts out of 64 districts of the country, mm -hmm. mostly northeastern part we are uh, working. And in the northeastern part, there are very important uh, uh, cities of the country, important. And peace breaking situation, particularly. Chitokong and Coxsuda, there are lots of huge mm -hmm. events um, uh, happening in, for breaking peace. Our people, not necessarily the, the non-Muslims are threatened. Muslims are also threatened. <laughs> we are getting um, um, bombs in the mosques. We are getting bombs in the in the in the in the in the um, Christians in churches, churches mm -hmm. in the in the in the um, prayer places of Hindus also. So what is happening? Is, is it communal peace-breaking mm -hmm. system or, or something else? So we'll have to go a lot in terms of understanding peace. Yeah. So I want to again welcome you to the webinar. Friends from friends joining online uh, from other countries, including Indonesia. Um, uh, I have not named all. There are all, uh, so many dignitaries today joining. So I, I, I take pardon from them for not naming them, but still 
I congratulate and welcome you to the uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ruby. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Imrano. So, um, so then I'm, I call uh, Professor Azumari Azra to deliver a keynote speech. The Professor Azumari Azra, all of you may know, uh, a great uh, scholar on the historian of uh, Islam and a lot of contribution, uh, in particular the reform of Islamic uh, uh, university uh, in Indonesia. And, and uh, Professor Azumari Azra, also the president of uh, Amman at the international level. Professor Azra, uh, screen is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, brother Mohaidin Abdullah Mohaidin, uh, sister uh, Arubi uh, Khalifa, uh, brother and sisters. Uh, it's very nice to to meet you again, uh, even though only through this Zoom, yeah. Uh, because time is very limited, and then we have to to catch up with the time, and we are behind actually. Uh, I I have a PowerPoint, but I'm not going to uh, to read all the PowerPoint. Uh, I I try to give. Uh, my speech only around uh, 10 minutes, and then you can go ahead with your uh, regular schedule, uh, normal schedule. Uh, if we talk about uh, building peace, inclusive, inclusivity, uh, uh, to prevent intolerance and radicalism in Muslim society, yeah? in relation to Islamic education in particular. And of course, uh, we in Indonesia and also in Bangladesh, as just said now that in Bangladesh, you have also madrasa here. Uh, I don't know, the, uh, you just mentioned that the number around 100, more than 100,000. I don't know the position of madrasa in in, Af in in Pakistan, but in Indonesia, madrasa uh, mostly belongs to community. I think uh, now we have uh, to be exact. The number of madrasa in Indonesia around 83, 83,557, uh, uh, five, five, yeah, 557. That's the number of madrasa to be exact, yeah. But of course, madrasa in Indonesia only uh, uh, only a, a part of uh, Islamic education system. We have also pesantren. Yeah? Pesantren in Indonesia, pesantren is traditional uh, Islamic boarding school. We have around thirty thousand uh, pesantren, uh, traditional Islamic boarding school across the country. And then in addition to that, we still have a general Islamic based general education. Uh, probably in some countries it is called secular education, but uh, of course we do not use the term secular education, but rather we call it general education. And then of course in this general education, we have uh, religious instruction because religious instruction is mandatory uh, for all level of education from kindergarten to university. So in Indonesia, we have, uh, we have two parallel system of education. The first one is a general education system under the Ministry of Education and Culture. And then the second uh, uh, part, part of the uh, integral part of the Indonesian education is madrasa education. Uh, under auspices of Ministry of uh, Religious Affairs. So if we, if we talk about, uh, uh, yeah, if we talk a, a little bit about uh, features of madrasa, uh, non-formal with loose curriculum and no grades, this is a traditional madrasa. But now, of course, madrasa in Indonesia implement, uh, apply curriculum, national curriculum. So we don't have actually uh, separate curriculum. So 
the madrasa in Indonesia is uh, fully fully controlled by the government yeah, through these two ministries, uh, Ministry of National Education and Culture and Ministry of Religious Affairs. So that's why uh, in Indonesia, uh, of course, uh, madrasa cannot be cannot be cannot be regarded as a breeding ground of radicalism because after 9/11 in in the US madrasa has been have been accused by not only of course by outsiders but even also some people in our own countries uh, perceive madrasa as a breeding ground of extremism radicalism in fact also some madrasa have been associated with uh, terrorism yeah. But I would say that this, uh, I think this acquisition is, is baseless, actually. Actually, uh, if you talk about radicalism among students, uh, many uh, who, who are radicals actually belong to general schools in the case of Indonesia. I don't know, in the case of, uh, in the case of Bangladesh, but Indonesia, uh, many general schools, many students of general schools uh, have been recruited by radical ideas, radical ideas by Muslim radical uh, transnational groups, yeah? uh, affiliated affiliated with uh, radical group in 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 the in the Middle East in particular, yeah? uh, including of course Al Qaeda and uh, ISIS, for instance. So I I I would suggest that uh, in order to uh, to confront the challenge challenges of extremism and radi and radicalism, we need to reform Islamic education. Yeah. What I mean by Islam reforms in Islamic education is changes in philosophy, form of institution, curriculum, and pedagogy uh, should be reformed. So reform it from uh, traditional ways into a more modern, more uh, contemporary uh, development in addition, in, in line with contemporary development. This is what I said, uh, what I suggest. Uh, and of course, uh, in Indonesia, we have conducted reform of uh, madrasa or Islamic education in general since 1970, in science 1970s. And then the result of these reforms is that Madrasa education has been recognized by the state as equal as equal as equivalent with general school. So uh, the the graduate of madrasa, let's say uh, secondary madrasa or alia, can uh, continue their education in general university or general university or pub, not not public but general university. I mean in some countries called as a secular university can continue not only to Islamic universities, because in, in Indonesia, we have also a quite big system of state Islamic universities across the country. But uh, the graduate of uh, secondary madrasa can continue their education to uh, general universities uh, rather than only to Islamic universities. So this is what I suggest first. What I suggested first, we need to reform the madrasa in terms of uh, curricula, in terms of substance, in terms of pedagogy. Yeah? We need to, yeah, we, we need to bring our madrasa into main, into mainstream of education. Uh, our madrasa should should not be only in margin, in the periphery of national education. Uh, it it should uh, madrasa should should stand uh, in equal uh, manner with the general school. So this is first. The second, in order to you know to to uh, respond to the uh, challenges of radicalism and uh, intolerance, for instance, we need to also to instill uh, what I call as wasatiyah Islam, wasatiyah Islam. Yeah? Uh, because of course we have to admit there is a lot of differences among different school of thought among Muslim. Yeah, uh, sometimes you know if you look at uh, to the west of our countries, to the west of our countries, including Afghanistan, Middle East, or Arab countries, 
uh, there is a lot of conflicts among Muslim, civil war among Muslim. Yeah? Uh, sectarianism uh, has is very strong yeah, among Muslims. So th therefore we need to, uh, uh, to uh, instill uh, wasatiyah Islam. What I mean uh, by, by wasatiyah Islam? Wasatiyah Islam is a Quran Quranic terminology coming from the term ummatan wasatan, middle path ummah. Yeah? Ummatan wasatan means middle path ummah. So wasatiyah Islam means justly balance Islam or middle path Islam. Wasatiyah Islam emphasizes the importance and necessities of justly balanced attitude. Should be justly balanced attitude rather than going to extremism, or radicalism, or you know uh, sectarianism, strong sectarianism among uh, different group of Muslims. And then uh, wasatiyah Islam has some basic characters uh, such as tawasud or in the middle, tawazun, balance, itidal, fair, just, tasamu, tolerance. Uh, we, so we need to, to instill a tasamu among our students, yeah? not only in madrasah, but also in general school. Uh, and musawah, egalitarianism, yeah? egalitarian between male and female Muslims. Uh, we should uh, give, uh, uh, of course, some kind of I don't know, affirmative action to our uh, Muslim women. And then of course, uh, uh, other characters of uh, Wasatiyah Islam is Surah, Islah, Reformis, Muwatanah, loving motherland, our own country. We, ha we have to live our, to love our own country and then Kudwah or innovative. Now I would suggest that Wasatiyah Islam should include, should, be in should, should include also, intra religion yeah among muslims inter religions among different group of uh, religions uh, between muslim and non islamic uh, religions such as uh, catholicism protestantism hinduism buddhism and at the same time wasatiyah islam should also include a good relation between uh, the faithful different group of the faithful and and, and government next uh, and then we have to use three locus of education. The first locus of education, of course, is family. Uh, parents should teach their children at home the understanding and practice of Wasatiyah Islam in many aspects of real life. Yeah? Should teach them yeah? uh, that to respect uh, differences among Muslim and then also to respect people of other religions. And also at the same time, parents should become model and beacon of Wasatiyah Islamic attitude and behavior for their education. Yeah, so uh, should become a model. Parents also should teach their children to be tasamu, tolerant and inclusive to their fellow citizens, fellow Muslims, and fellow human beings, and fellow creation of God. So. Uh, not only love love our uh, human being, but also other creation of of God, like of course, hayawanat, yeah, hayawanat meaning animals and also uh, flora and fauna. Flora is the uh, what is that? The uh, apa itu flora? Parents should apply reward and punishment related to the attitude and praxis of fasatia Islam. Uh, we have to. Yeah, to 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 uh, give our courtesy to our children if they you know if, if they behave uh, in wasatia Islam, they, they apply wasatia Islam in their in their uh, real life. Next, and then the second locus of uh, wasatia Islam is uh, is, uh, is is a school, of course. Wasatia Islam should be taught in madrasa and general and general schools. Yeah? The instruction of teaching of Wasatiyah Islam can be integrated in whole relevant subjects matters such as religious instruction. I don't know in Bangladesh, but in Indonesia, religious instruction, as I said earlier, is mandatory, is obligatory in all school, uh, in all schools uh, in the country. And also, we can also integrate it, integrate uh, Wasatiyah Islam in citizenship, uh, subject matters of citizenship and history. There should be a syllabus of integrative Wasatia Islam in certain subject matters. Teacher and administrator of school and madrasa should become exemplary 
exemplary models of wasatiya Islam. Uh, so they should, uh, uh, you know, uh, behave uh, as a, a representation of wasatiya Islam. School should also apply principle of reward and punishment in the application of wasatiya Islam among students and also among uh, other people uh, involved in the process of education. Next, the last one. Uh, the third locus of education should be should be uh, in social institution at large, such as uh, in the mosque and other public institution. The ulama or preachers in general should have a strong orientation to dissemination of teaching of Islam wasatia, wasatia Islam. Uh, I don't know in Bangladesh, but in Indonesia, you know, uh, preaching is free. In Indonesia, you don't you don't need to have a permit or license from the government. You can uh, you can give your sermon freely in the uh, uh, in in mosque or any other places. But at the same time, of course, uh, you know uh, the ustad or the the ulama uh, sermon givers should uh, teach uh, the jamaah jamaah congregation of wasatia Islam. Uh, uh, and of course, Wasatia Islam uh, in essence is a peaceful approach to uh, among peoples of different groups. Yeah. And then at the same time, the government should facilitate the institution and preachers for the dissemination of Wasatia Islam. Uh, the role of government, of course, is very important in this respect. Yeah. I think uh, this is uh, what I want to, you know, uh, to deliver basically in short. Yeah. Uh, you can read uh, my PowerPoint. Uh, you can ask, uh, I, I would ask the organizer to distribute uh, this uh, PowerPoint to uh, participants of the conference. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, uh, Professor Azra. It's uh, providing uh, uh, framework uh, 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 and the, the value, strong values on Islam wasatia, but at the same time also um, addressing uh, a possible uh, solution to take a reform in the context of uh, Islamic uh, education. Uh, this field has been, uh, uh, I mean, Indonesia worked uh, a lot in this field for many years. And uh, of course, we are also facing a lot of challenges uh, in doing reform, and we are interested to also learning from uh, Bangladesh. So without further ado, I'm interested to uh, continue for the first uh, session on our uh, workshop. Uh, we are going to hear some of the uh, uh, three uh, presenters uh, from uh, South Asia, uh, India in this case, uh, but we're covering, uh, including Bangladesh, regarding the uh, big picture on the national dynamics on the intolerance and radicalism in Bangladesh uh, 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 and South uh, Asia. And also, we are also having the expert from Indonesia will share about the uh, current context of Indonesia dealing uh, with radicalism and including to highlight uh, about the role of uh, women. And uh, also uh, we will hear the, some of the studies uh, done by uh, the Center for the Study of Islam and, and Society the UIN Sarif Hidayatullah State Islamic University in discovering the uh, situation of uh, radicalism in uh, Indonesia. So uh, for this uh, session, we're supposed to have uh, one presenter from uh, Bangladesh, uh, Dr. Samia, uh, expected to explore about uh, faith and education in Bangladesh mapping and challenges of inclusiveness, but unfortunately, uh, Dr. Samia uh, 
uh, did not, uh, Dr. Sami uh, uh, doesn't respond uh, very well. So then uh, we, we, we postponed Dr. Sami for uh, another occasion uh, to see uh, the comprehensive survey that done by uh, Brock University in uh, Bangladesh. So don't worry about, about that. So this, so this uh, session, uh, I'm going to invite uh, Ashraf Ali, the General Secretary of Rights Track, uh, Kolkata, uh, uh, to give overview about the political dynamics of radicalism leading to religious extremism in South Asia as the foundation of our discussion uh, to see uh, on the side of the education. Uh, later on on the second uh, uh, part of our uh, workshop, uh, in particularly seeing uh, the work uh, in empowerment of uh, youth, uh, both in Indonesia and Bangladesh. So, uh, Brother Ashraf, uh, time is, is yours. You want to move here? Oh, you want to do yes then? Yes, I will. Later. Yes. Assalamualaikum. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dear friends, respected Nani Bhai, Prophet Saranis, Ms. Sahib, Dr. Ashraf, Mayuddin Bhai, my brother, Rasid Zama Sahib, Sister Alia, Sister uh, Ruby, and uh, Odali Bhai, and my sister from Antor, and uh, Sapkira, Krishna. <coughs> yes, she's. He's his uh, same name, Ashraf. <laughs> Your friend. Yes. Uh, so it's a very good morning for all of you. Uh, this is uh, very fortunate for me to be a part of this August uh, gathering and uh, with the uh, academician, scholars, philosopher. Mm -hmm. They will operate for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so next, please. So basically, I have been assigned for uh, addressing the radicalization in South Asia. This is uh, before we're going to have a discussion with radicalization. What is radicalization? Yeah, because I'm trying to define the radicalization uh, is a process by which an individual or a group adopt increasing rigid, conceived, and joinedist. That's I, I mean the joinedist. We about others, which often lead to exclusion and violence. This is basically the definition. A number of definitions are there uh, for radicalization. The action for process, second is the action or process of causing someone to adopt radical position on political or social issues where they want. The radicalization of the intelligentsia lead to the revolution. It is also a revolution. It may be negative. It is also negative, it is always negative, but
but uh, this is the situation next please uh, political dynamic of radicalization for this is uh, uh, basically i want to highlight the political promotes agenda or on half truth or fake facts by giving religious religious or um, religion color to consolidate vote bank based on hate and exclusionary views it does before uh, half an hour we had a discussion with professor and this is zama sahib and sister alia that this is the situation around the globe because of the political reason political uh, benefit this uh, message is propagating which is nationalism to galvanize public opinion to stay in power this is the political you know the will how to remain power how to gain the power all political party often use religious religion and religious hegemony of majority on minorities because this is you know this is the sometimes it's a game the gaming by the politician how to move how to use the minorities of its country next so a uh, political dynamic strategy to that the what uh, the political party uh, take strategy uh, how to ruling over their uh, parties in the country over power other political parties to create pressure on their political parties ruling longer period because this is the reason this is the reason they want to continue ruling decade and decade of years and years they want to have a, their party through the ruling for longer period political dynamics are used to extend ruling period for longer time this is the main uh, you know uh, the motto of every political party how to sustain their political parties as a ruling party to gain power win power forgetting political mileage they also want to political mileage to avail all sorts of political mileage different type of dynamic are used wrongly sometimes they are you know in india basically i am telling you in india sometimes they are uh, uh, every person in india have now in their national uh, identity now that the current party the current ruling party is uh, creating national identification on cows every cows most of the cows have its own uh, uh, national identification every cow cows are counting rather the, the the human kind the human beings are you know Uh, killing through different ways to different reasons in the name of uh, religion in the name of political in for politics in the name of cows mob lynching is common phenomenon now in india even even the person who is selling the muslim person who is selling small small you know uh, the daily uses things could not sell in the majorities areas they are asking who are you from your name your identity number if you are Uh, coming from the minority area your name is minor from the minorities you should be kicked off from their place it is happening all over the india next please promoting partisan radical groups for gaining benefits some political parties are involved in using radical group for getting political benefits in uh, there is number of you know uh, the extremist group not uh, because as professor azhar saying madrasa is a call of a place of terrorism this is totally wrong but what they are the majority are doing in india there is number of groups who are propagating the agendas of the issues of the majority in, in against the minority so this number of agendas i don't want to disclose over here but this is the agenda because some parts of some of our friends are also looking in india so this is the uh main thing where uh, the, the the political parties propagating number of using the number of small small religious group those were propagating against the minorities divide and rule of as, as you know everybody the divide and rules everywhere in uh, in, in uh, when we were in colonial system divided rule from coming from the uh, came from the Uh, British period, but now it is also happening in India. Everywhere, divide and rule, creating difference among the different group, help political parties to have better control and also for longer period. But how we will divide into the two groups? You are minority. You are from. Uh, uh, you have already given Bangladesh and Pakistan. Why you are staying over here? 
go out to Pakistan. Every if if there is some you know like the Bangladesh, if there is any uh, traffic jam, oh this is created by the Pakistanis. This is created by the Al Qaeda. So every you know every point, every pinch of their every point of their they are using that type of you know polarization against the uh, minorities and the groups because this is only for the political reason. How to sustain? How to sustain their polit politics? How to sustain their ruling party to long and long? Next, using a radical group for vestige interest, political mileage. Most of the political parties are using the radical groups for, as already I have said, to overcome political crisis. While political parties are in crisis, to use they use the radical group for their benefit to come out from the crisis. Wrong interpretation. This is a very very important in India because the social media is you know from. It, it was a very ancient in, in incident in Bangladesh, mm. in Pakistan, but they are just propagating through the social media that this is happening in particular province of India, in, in against the Hindus, against the Muslims. These are the very, very critical situation in India. For 1947, 1998, they, they just uh, you know uh, cut the clip and insert into the social media. This is happening. Oh, this is finally when they have uh, looked out there, they, they, they scrutinize that this is not in India, this is not happening in India, this is other side, sometimes in Bangladesh, sometimes in Pakistan, sometimes in Afghanistan. Long before. Even, even uh, in India right now, it is uh, wrong propagation is going on about the halal food. Somehow it is uh, gone through the social media that Muslims are uh, okay. selling their halal food. When they are selling, before selling, they are fighting over the food. This is totally haram for Muslim. He cannot do it. He cannot, yes. So they, 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 this type of propaganda is going on everywhere. Next. Yes, please. Next, please. Oh, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad bag. Back, back. Back, back. Back, back. Back, back. Yeah. yeah. So, India is a country of different religious, secular country. As our preamble says, the sovereign socialist republic of India. But uh, again, there is the different of the, you know, concept, what, what the policy says, what the constitution says, what, what, what is happening in India. So this, uh, of course, this is the country of multi-religious. About 22 religious are, uh, sorry, 17 religious are over there. They are they're staying okay. over there. Now the religion became an issue. Belief, emotion, political party in India are very much aware about the sentiment of illiterate population. 47 percent are illiterate in India. About 52 percent, 52 or 53 percent are illiterate and 47 was illiterate. So how to use the illiterate person through the wrong propagation of minorities, propagation of Islams, their beliefs, because madrasa is a part of, is a vein of terrorism. As, as Professor Azra says, as Professor Anil Zama says that, but this is not true. But one thing is, I, I, I would uh, request, uh, even, even we are uh, uh, having a number of uh, discussion with the local group that we should open the mosque, we should open the madrasa and invite the non-Muslims, invite the majority people will come and see what is happening inside the madrasa and mosque and masjid. So this is, you know, uh, religion become an issue. As I say, majority belongs to a particular religion. The thing is, as I said earlier, just a uh, morning with the Professor Mr. Samasad, if you want to see the status of a country, status of a human index in a country, you have to see the status of minorities. If minorities are well off, that the country is good and their uh, index is very good. Otherwise, because if your minority are in uh, crisis, if your minority are facing problem, it means there is something happening with you in your country. So majorities, you know, majorities of uh, in our country in India is the uh, uh, one particular uh, religion which they are not, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 their interest to get support the match of the majority. Just but the political party basically want to 
support the majority people because they don't want to lose their vote they know what is happening they know very well what is happening but due to vote due to vote bans they don't want to lose their sentiment from the majority uh, being a, there is a gaps in the institutional building in india being a being of the institution through being a institution through the poor governance and making of law we have a good you know in in uh, in documents in uh, laws we have a good laws we have good document but it is you know uh, there is a gap between the laws and in implementation it's a big gap in governance in kind of law poor law how to you know uh, one uh, during the corona in 2020 2020 in march when few people in delhi uh, from the tablighi uh, uh, jamaat 23 or 24 people uh, were found that they have a positive but finally the english they are indonesian pakistanis afghanistanis most of the people are from the foreign with the foreign they have been treated that they are the corona jihadi they are propagating they are propagating the yes. corona spreading spreading the corona in india yeah. mm. my god <laughs> this is the system because of and after that after few months there was no such incident that they have been enacted by corona mm. and every news media every news media yeah, you you people are you you people are you people are tablighi uh, jamaat are the main culprit for increasing corona oh my god failure of rule of law because there is law but failure it is not in implemented as such normalization of violence in public life Nor violence is a is normalized people oh bomb village oh this bombing oh these people are uh, 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 mob lynching is common phenomenon now if a person came with a beef or you know meat not beef meat it may be a uh, goat it may be buffalo it may be you know uh, uh, chicken but when they saw you as a muslim you have so you have a uh, uh, flesh in your bag in bag it means it is beef you have to be eaten so violence is a common phenomena a small small violence is common phenomena in india highly polarized media as i said the media of the yo the person is you know the, the person yeah. is being helped with the increasing the corona this person is the, uh, killing the cows the type of you know uh, propagating through social media uncontrolled social media again there is no control they know there is there is a system there is a uh, laws but they are uncontrolled because of they are propagating in favor of the ruling party victimization of the institution as there is number of institution but they are victimized next is country being uh, cons uh, consistently circular as i said some political parties used next please next next please how to address this issue this is here i'm telling you though i wrote uh this morning today but i know this is a very poor and in general statement propagate secular education and scientific temperament which professor azra is saying was said that we should have a good pedagogy and it it has to be started from the primary level how to propagate how to uh, in, inserted the uh, the, uh, the peace building the peace process the courage it should be come into the pedagogy and curriculum promoting inter community religious dialogue it should be increasing more and more and more strengthening the human rights and civil society movements now in india you could not have any type of like agitation like uh, uh, rally like a uh, number of you know activities which is not if if you do as an ngo as a social organization you have to be targeted so promoting non violent way to conflict resolution education youth to use social media responsibly because i am i know the youth are the main torch bearer of its community so that should be i know men more in talent next please <coughs> increasing practice of issue based social audit involving mass media media advocacy in propagating positive message instead of negative highlighting the issue of minority in all sense their education their health their uh, uh, their social status creating pressure group for incorporation of the issue of minorities during policy formulation they have number of policies of the uh, 
for minority but the those who are uh, developing the development uh, development the uh, document of minority but there is an absence of minority there's no minority and these people they people are developing situation so make it relate but now with the list but not the last but not the least make it relate to global agenda because we have a great great agenda strong agenda every country have signed sign in favor of the sdg yeah. so this is the right time to hammer no one the dialogue that the, the slogan is no one leave behind so no one leave behind what it has been but there is a good agenda we have 16 and 17 we could do it we can include all the is including two agenda 16 peace building 17 partnership next please thank you thank you so much so i have to go there <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you uh, so much uh, brother uh, okay uh, we 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 will have a uh, professor uh anisu zaman to cover the side of uh, bangladesh and complete the uh, uh big picture on what happened in south asia professor anisu zaman please uh come here <coughs> yeah it is can بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم dear friends brothers and sisters coming from indonesia bangladesh india and elsewhere my old friend and sister Ms. Ruby Khalif has allotted me five minutes to speak on this issue. You see, before the invasion of this corona, I used to speak for one hour in, in a class. You know, and I, I have I have taught at the Dhaka University for more than fifty years. But after corona, since I am an elderly person and I cannot go frequently, they have given me the privilege. of speaking for 3 hours in a class you see at a stretch so you can compare with that i'm not a budget like that <laughs> in any case i can understand why this m5 minutes are been allotted to me because we have we have many speakers many topics but we have to finish them during their stipulated time the best thing to maintain this time is to agree with the speakers so so fully agree agree with my respected brother professor azra of indonesia this is not just a fun i really agree with his kind of presentation the topics the contents of the topic and actually these are the things on which you are working for many many years it is not that something very novel has been spoken by this learned speaker professor azra these are the things which we are also talking about because this has come from our very realization from experience with work experience working with the people so that is the moderate islam i would say in english also the islam moderate islam no state and this is not something new this it is called in islamic terminology <laughs> that either you get extreme ifrat and tafri extreme extremism and slacknessness no you go between Islam is a middle course, and this is this is actually a hadith where Blah Blah Prophet. Not only that, it has been stated in the Quran; it is available in hadith. And not only that, it is there actually long before the advent of our Blah Blah Prophet. It is in <coughs> Socrates' view, in Aristotle's view, which is called in Western terms the Golden Mean. So we must stick to that, and on the basis of that, we must integrate all our system of education because the very topic is, you see, integration of inclusive of educational system you see the pedagogy i give emphasis we not only should instill the modern education the scientific view in madrasa we also must bring out the moral and religious aspect of education into general education system because in our country it is said that in schools you get work but without religion in madrasas you get religion but no work 
that is not this is not that is other worldly this is this this is this worldly but the quranic approach is rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana it is there in the quran everything is there in the quran and this and we are just going there so and, and so this has also been said by allah ikbal so what has happened is this that we are giving too much importance emphasis on other worldly life in madrasa system education in general system and or general system of education we are giving too much emphasis on worldly things what we really need is a combination so this is important and another point which i get a stop here regarding professor azra's comments i should come to brother brother my very beloved brother younger brother professor mr so <coughs> mr shafali his name is wonderful ashraf you say sharif the, the, the sharif means very respect highly respected profoundly respected ashraf and the kind of picture that he has given about india it happen, it is happening in bangladesh in toto because because it is what is political party i remember in 1970 the you know the party which is in power in bangladesh is called awami league and the follower of the students front is called satro league and this satro league was founded on 4th of january you see and this is just before the election of 1970 and there was a national conference and there bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman the father of the nation was saying that i want to go to power i want to capture power because i don't do anjuman and this is something which is by definition is the objective of political parties a political party is one <coughs> which try to capture political party for example take the case of tablik jamaat thousands millions of people are getting together but nobody bothers the government is giving facilities to them but if there are three or four people i don't support them but this is just an example this is the for example this is banned everywhere if four of them are out government will chase them why because they are political they want to capture political power by the assembly of the public jamaat government is not threatened so if you are very correct that the main objective of political parties is to capture power to remain in power and they have, I, i say that in my class i could teach a course on government of politics and there is a topic on political parties and i say finally that the objective of the of those who are in power they have two agendas they are saying many things but there are two main agendas one is to remain in power and to prolong that power and the objective of all parties in opposition also have two things to go to power and then remain in power so to make that meaningful effective they are taking all kinds of they are adopting all kinds of activities you see and as i said in the case of bangladesh just the, the kind of situation that you get in india is happening so they and this is not something very new with political parties as i have said this, this is their very nature they will be saying about many things they will reach people they will bring all kinds of benefits and amenities and facilities of modern civilization to everyone's door but we should not forget that these are their sort of strategy but the main objective is as you have said is this so this is about about now i have, I have got only one or two minutes let me say a few things because of shortage of time i could not mention the names of those who are present here physically and those who are joined online but but i have a list of that <clears throat> so about radicalization this is very important and this is against the theme of our today's discussion and it is against the way we understand islam 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 is not a revolution really it is an evolution i think you take the <coughs> case of banning of wine the three steps take the case of slavery islam does not approve of that but it has taken a evolutionary process because what comes through evolution does not last long so we muslims we are against radicalization extremism we are for moderation and this is very correct and as i have been said very correctly the same allegation is being made here about madrasas that the madrasas are the breeding ground of terrorism this is totally false not only in the case of indonesia 
it is applicable to countries, to all countries. Take because of the Al Qaeda. Osama bin Laden is not an emergency educated person, he is an engineer. In Bangladesh, there are 108 private universities, and the top university is called North University. It is the first university and the top university. <coughs> and there are many students discovered from there who are connected with this radicalization of Islam. So it is not a matter of madrasa or general education. It is a matter of how you teach Islam and the way you follow in this. Again, and it has been covered that we should take yeah. recourse to this moderation. We must always be guided by this thing. So this is a false business. I, there is there are three words: use, abuse, and misuse. Actually, we are abusing and misusing Islam. Why? Because we want to remain in power or put you in power. And because of this, those who are in power, they are not only in Bangladesh, all over the world, in all ages, they have misused or abused religion. Similarly, nowadays, very rich people. They are also trying to make more money and they are also using. But take the case of Bangladesh. The most of the a good number of MPs, they are businessmen. They don't have any political background. And the kind of thing they are bidding there is for their financial interest. They are enacting laws which will go to their benefit, not to the benefit of the public. So this is also very important. And this is a new <coughs> dimension in Bangladesh. And I suspect this is also true in other countries. The, not only the politicians, they are misusing and abusing religion, and not only some other religions, in the case of Hinduism, for example, I'm finishing within one minute. In the, in, in the case of India, for example, they are misusing the very essence of Hinduism. Hinduism, in a sense, is very liberal, very accommodating, very adjusting, because you can, Radha Krishna, the former president of India, he has said, that an atheist, Hinduism is so Catholic, so liberal, he has said, that even an atheist can be Hindu, atheist can be Hindu. And in the context of wide Catholic culture, the what kind of things are now happening in India, you can easily understand. So this is very important. Now, I finish because there is a notice and probably I have crossed five minutes. Thank you very much, my dear brothers and sisters. We, we understand all this. So this seminar is a, is a place where we, where, we, where we bring out certain things which are there in our mind. And we are similar kind of people and we are getting assembled everywhere. I see almost the same faces, the same ideas. <laughs> I do not know the use of this. <laughs> Today it is said, just half a second. It is said that the guardians should take care of their children to keep them away from this smartphone and these modern devices. But do your children listen to you? They don't. Yeah. I finished with one remarks from my eldest brother. He said, when my children are very small, I did not beat them because they will die. Now I cannot beat them because they will beat me. <laughs> so what can you do? And this is maybe one of the reasons why some people are tempted to take recourse to radicalism because we don't respond to <coughs> good advice. A thief will not. Thank you. A killer will not listen to you. If you give you call, a thief that, brother, don't steal because this is wrong, morally wrong. Religion will listen to you. You will have to be abusive. You will take it into him or after him. Religion, gender, whatever happens, quarter of a second, whatever happens <laughs> in philosophy, there is a saying, Every event must have a cause. So whatever happens, there is a cause. Yeah. You may not accept that cause, but there is a cause. Yeah. And we must understand. And that is why we are here. Why is this happening? We must yeah. go to the very roots. And we must address there. And that is why the question of the educators come in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you. And may Allah give us tawfiq so that you can be moderate Muslim. Okay. And expand in a sense is a clarion call. I could <laughs> I could speak for hours yeah, and very know. very funnily. Yeah. So that student, students students do not want to listen now. <laughs> so we must we must give them some salad. So, so oh, that wow. they listen. I have given you some salad. Thank you very much. Ladies thank and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, thank you, thank you very much.
Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Professor uh, Anil Zaman from uh, Department of Philosophy of Dhaka University. I've been learning uh, from him for uh, how many years? Do you know? Long retired from Dhaka yeah. University. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, I think one of very important message that delivered uh, by uh, Professor Aninu Zaman uh, about it is it is not only what a type of education that we have, but how we actually teach Islam in our young generation is much, much uh, matter to shape the moderation uh, in thinking and also uh, behavior. Uh, I am now uh, calling uh, the second speaker. Um, so I, I changed the order. Uh, now uh, we can have Fikri Fahrul Faiz from the Center for the Study of Islam in Society, PPIM, Sharif Hidayatullah State Islamic University of Jakarta, uh, <laughs> will deliver survey of radicalism among teachers in school. Uh, Fikri, are you here? Oh yeah, there. Yeah. Okay, screen is <laughs> yours. Was, yeah. Thank you, Marubi. Uh, first of all, let me share the screen. Sorry. Yeah. Can you see the screen now? Yeah, perfect. Um, we can see this yeah, and okay. we can hear you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Barubi. First of all, I would like to thank to uh, committee Antar uh, Bangladesh, Aman Indonesia, uh, Professor Azra, Barubi, Masufron, Bahanifa, and others uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity uh, to attend important dialogue on national uh, dynamics on radical uh, radicalism and intolerance uh, in Bangladesh and Indonesia. Uh, I'm really honored to be here. And my name is Fikri Farul Faiz. You can call me Fikri. I am researcher at the Center of Study of Islam and Society, or Indonesia, we call it Pusat Pengkajian Islam dan Masyarakat, State Islamic University, Jakarta. I also work for Convey Indonesia. It's a project for countering violent, and violent extremism for youth in Indonesia. Uh, in this opportunity, I would like to share with you a brief findings of our uh, survey on religious perspective and attitudes of teachers in Indonesia. Yeah, as a background, we all know that teachers have a strategic position and play an important role in molding students' values, perspective, and ideas. And also, in general, teachers can act as a support system and ultimate role, for, uh, role model for the young generation. And based on this crucial role in inspiring young generation to develop and improve their skills and capabilities, in Indonesia, we call teacher as a pelita. Pelita in Bahasa Indonesia is a uh, means a light that can illuminate the darkness. In other hand, uh, in recent years, Indonesia is experiencing an increasing problem of intolerance, radicalism, and violent extremism. And this also happens in education institutions. For example, in 2017, a survey conducted by us, Pusat Pengkajian Islam and uh, dan Masyarakat, or Center of the Study of Islam and Society, found that many Muslim students tend to have intolerant views. And in details, here's our, uh, our finding from the survey on intolerance and radicalism among students in Indonesia. The survey conducted in 2017 and involving uh, almost 2,000 uh, high school students and university students from 34 provinces in Indonesia. And many people have asked us, why only Muslim students? Uh, there are several reasons behind this. Uh, first, because we, the Center of the Study of Islam and Society, have the expertise in Islam uh, so that, yeah, we confident to analyze more about uh, Islam in Indonesia. 
And the second, Islam is the largest religion in Indonesia. That's why uh, Islam have a crucial role in, in Indonesia. Yeah, we have also assessed uh, student level of uh, intolerance and radicalization by dividing it into two categories, uh, views or perspective and intention action or attitude or behavior. We also divide it into two objects, which is internal, which means toward Muslim from, for, uh, from other groups uh, in Islam, and external, which means toward adherence of other religions. And surprisingly, we found that Muslim students are more intolerant toward Muslim from other groups or internal than toward adherence of other religions or external. Around 51% of uh, Muslim students have internal uh, intolerance views and 34% of them have external intolerance uh, attitudes. However, if we see from the um, intention action or attitudes or behavior, the number is decreasing where we can uh, see this number where 34% of stu students in Indonesia uh, have intolerance uh, attitude or behavior and only seven, uh, sorry, internally toward internal or same Muslim from other religions, sorry, uh, from other groups. And externally, uh, they there are seventeen percent of Muslim students who have uh, intolerance, intolerance, and action. We also uh, successfully map out the radical views and radical intention action of this Muslim student in Indonesia, where uh, fifty-eight percent of Muslim stud students have radical views, and only seven percent of them have radical intention action. Yeah, uh, this finding make us curious. As a teacher can, uh, can act as a role model for the students, what about intolerance and radicalization, uh, radicalization among uh, teachers? Thus, in 2018, we conducted a survey on intolerance and radicalism among Muslim teachers in Indonesia, and we have two research questions. First of, all, uh, first of all, what is the level of intoler intolerance and radicalism among uh, teachers in Indonesia? And the second one, what factors contribute to the level of intolerance and radicalism among teachers? And here's the re research uh, method. The unit of analysis is Muslim teacher uh, from early education to high school level. The sample model 1,000 Muslim teachers. This include from general teacher and also from madrasah teachers. Uh, assessment tool that we use is that self-report computer-assisted instruction and implicit association, association test. And main variable we use here is that uh, religious intolerance, religious radicalism, and contributing factors to those uh, religious intolerance and radicalization. And confidence level, we can uh, achieve at 95% with margin error 2.07%. We also conducted quality control. Uh, we did spot check toward 5% of samples to make sure that the data collected by us is uh, correct. Yeah. Then I will share with you the survey findings about uh, survey among teachers in Indonesia. Here's the intolerance uh, level of uh, teachers in Indonesia. We can uh, see from the opinion of our view, there are 57% of teachers have intolerant views and only 43% of them have intolerant views. From the perspective of intolerant uh, intention action or, or behavior or attitude, the number is decreasing. Only 38% uh, of teachers have radical behavior and 62 others have um, tolerant behavior. Here's the example uh, of the finding on tolerance both in views and uh, actions. 
intolerance views, for example, to tell, uh, 21% of teachers do not agree that neighbors who have different religions can hold religious event at their residence. And also there are 56% of teachers disagree that non-Muslim can establish faith-based schools around their area. About action, if they have opportunity, 26% of teachers are willing to sign petition against the head of education office who has different religion with them and 34% of teachers are, are willing to sign a petition against the establishment of non-Islamic faith-based school in their area of residence. And what about radicalism among teachers in Indonesia? Here is the uh, overall data. We can see here uh, from their opinion, 46% of teachers in Indonesia tend to have radical opinion and uh, 53 others tend to have moderate perspective. If we, can, if we see from radical intention uh, action or attitude, 41% of teachers in Indonesia tend to have radical intention act, action and 58 others have moderate behavior. And here's the example of views and um, attitudes of Muslim teachers in Indonesia, where 29% uh, uh, of teachers agreed to participate in jihad in southern Philippines, Syria, or Iraq in the struggle for establishment of an Islamic state. And if they have the opportunity to 28% uh, of teachers are willing to encourage others to join the war to establish an Islamic state. And 30% of them are willing to attack the police who arrest people who are trying to establish an Islamic state in Indonesia. Yeah, this number show us the serious threat of radicalism and intolerance in education institution in Indonesia. So uh, what are the factors that contribute to level of intolerance and radicalism among teachers? At least there are two important uh, factors here that I would like to share with you. The first one is Islamism and the second one is demography. From the Islamism perspective, uh, Islamism is one of the important variables related to intolerance and radicalism among teachers in Indonesia. Uh, from this perspective, Islam is understood as uh, the most perfect and all encompassing. So it must be the only source of reference in understanding various aspects of life. The view of teacher who encourage Islamic law to be applied in all political spheres shown a pattern known as radical Islamism, which emphasized the importance of Sharia as the main reference source in all aspects of life. Such a, an absolute perspective is, on, is one of the important characteristics of religious fundamentalism, which tend to be close, inward looking, and exclusive in responding to scientific developments, especially those identified as non Islamic in nature. Here's the example of uh, Islamism perspective among teachers in Indonesia, where 40% of teachers agree that Al Quran has taught everything about science. Hence, Muslims no longer need to learn about uh, what they call as science from the Western. So only uh, uh, science from Islam, this matter. There are also 83% of teachers agree that Islam is the only solution to address every problem in society and they don't need others uh, uh, solution. And there are 62% of teachers agree that on, only a system of government based on Islamic law is best for Indonesia. So uh, this means that they doesn't agree, uh, they don't agree with democratic uh, system that being applied now in Indonesia. 78% of teachers agree that Muslims are obligated to elect leader, for example, like president, governor, and others who fights for the implementation of Sharia law in Indonesia. And 64% uh, of teachers agree that non-Muslim are not allowed to be Indonesian president. So no president is coming from other religions in Indonesia. They believe in that statement. And also 23% uh, of teachers 
agree that the government of Indonesia, which is established based on Pancasila and 45 uh, constitution, is so good. So good means that they they are allowed to fight uh, the official government in Indonesia to establish what they call as a Islamic uh, base uh, or Islamic state in Indonesia. So about demography, we divide it into five categories here. Uh, the first one is gender, uh, type of schools, level of education, economy, and age. On gender, we found that female uh, teachers have higher intolerant views toward adherence of other religions than male teacher. And male teacher here uh, have radical, uh, have higher radical opinions and intention action than male teachers. Uh, this is uh, this shows that uh, female also become a vulnerable actors in radicalization and, and intolerance. Maybe later, but Gete will explain more about uh, gender and radicalization. Uh, the second uh, characteristic is type of schools. We found that madrasa teachers are more intolerant toward adherence of other religion than general school teachers, and private school teachers, including madrasa, private school. Uh, are more intolerant and radical than public school teacher. And about level of education, early education teachers have a higher prevalence of intolerance opinion toward adherence of other religions than teacher of elementary schools, junior high school, and senior high school. This is also alarming for us that um, radicalization and intolerance is uh, massively <clears throat> uh, disseminated into yeah early education. Uh, the children who has like five to seven years old, they already thought about uh, radicalism and intolerance views. On economy, the lower the income, the higher their radical views. This also uh, shows that there are significant uh, contribution or relations. About, uh, on radicalization and radicalism and intolerance and economy. So yeah, economy become an important factor here. And lastly, uh, about age, the older the teachers, the higher their tolerant views and the lower their radical opinion and intention action. This might be the older the teacher, they, they become uh, wiser and wiser. And this also uh, shows us this, that uh, young teachers in Indonesia uh, are vulnerable to uh, radicalization and tolerance views in Indonesia. So from this uh, finding, can you conclude two minutes? We have like yes, I can I can do it. <laughs> I, actually, this is the last my uh, presentation, the the last page of my presentation. So this is the recommendation we we formulate from the findings. The first one is to increase teachers' awareness and skills on prevention of intolerance and radicalism in schools. Uh, and the second one is to increase program and activities for teachers, which encourage them to experience diversity and open rooms for dialogue with adherents of other regions. Uh, so basically, basically intolerance and radicalization can happen uh, with prejudice uh, where a teacher can, uh, yeah, doesn't know with other identity. So this should be one that can be encouraged for teacher to know, uh, to have friends, uh, to open dialogue with others. The third one is to empower institution that produce teachers and to make sure that no different treatment between private and public teachers. And the last one is to improve teachers' welfare as we know that uh, economy and radicalization and intolerance are quite significant. Then this is the last uh, part of my presentation. Thank you very much uh, for the time. And all findings and publication are available in the confeindonesia.com. Uh, this is the website for Confe Indonesia and also in PPIM website, which is, yeah, you can see here. And I will share the uh, presentation to you guys. Thank you so much, Mbak Ruby. I'll back to you. Thank you, Fikri. Uh, uh, very well researched, according friends here. And then uh, uh, for me, is uh, 
a bit scary uh, when you mention about the female teachers, uh, uh, in fact, that has higher number comparing to a male mm -hmm. teacher heavy radical views and also uh, intention to perform the uh, radical action, uh, as you mentioned. And I think it will link to the next presentation where uh, Badete is going to give you uh, not the full answering why female teacher every higher, but I think in general, we know that phenomenon of the increasing uh, number of women engaged in violent extremism in Indonesia documented very well in many research. And, and I think it's a good to complete what your the picture from you. So I just invite my data to give overview about uh, situation, the current situation in the context of violent extremism in Indonesia and and why actually more women now engage in, in violent extremism, uh, though currently we are in the uh, pandemic context, but the situation is still uh, very you know, uncertain. Uh, but it, yeah. you join from there or the here? Psychological yeah. reason could be that because most, in most cases, the women are victims of domestic violence and this Thank find you. expression in their action. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I'm really happy to be here to meet our uh, new friends from Bangladesh and India. And I'm learning actually from all of you here. And it is, uh, I agree with Professor, uh, and thank you for Mr. Iman Mohak that already. Oh, yeah. uh, sorry, I'm still here. Is there a mic there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, we will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, should I repeat it again? Okay, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. I'm really happy to meet my our new college from Bangladesh yeah. and India. And I'm really learning from all of them here. And it is very interesting to see the difference between India, Bangladesh, and Indonesia in terms of radicalism and terrorism. Because what I heard from our friends yesterday in the conference, in Bangladesh, there is no terrorism anymore. It was in the past, but no longer happening now because of the zero tolerance yeah, yeah, policy. Yeah, from the government. Yeah, from <laughs> the government. <laughs> That's the, no, the, the professor. Yeah. And Let me it, come back. Please, 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 please talk okay. to the presentation. We don't have the information. Okay. okay. So that's what I heard. So if I this the situation, then I'm really I'm I want to learn from Bangladesh how to stop this. But anyway, I want to explain to you about terrorism in Indonesia, especially the involvement of women, because women are uh, how to say involved in terms of intolerance. Uh, our friends Fikri already explained a lot, so I will not repeat again. But we have uh, in Alpha, uh, we have uh, intolerance now, growing intolerance in Indonesia. And I agree with uh, Professor Sarif that this is good for the politician. Uh, politician use this, yeah, using religion. 
So maybe I'm, I will be focused more on the women involvement in terrorism. In Indonesia, actually, we started terrorism. It's not a new thing. It's actually back to the really in the beginning of establishments of the country. When Indonesia is uh, independent, actually, the radicals group already there. They wanted to, uh, when we established and we, when we have to say, preparing to settle the country, to set up the country, the Muslims wanted that is Indonesia to become a Islamic country. While our president Sukarno, you know Sukarno, yeah? Because Sukarno are aware that Indonesia is not only built by the Muslim, but this is, there are Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, and also local language. So he cannot, uh, he decided not, not accommodate the uh, aspiration from the Muslim. So he made Pancasila. Pancasila is our philosophy, yeah. which is accommodating all religions, uh, accepted all religions and ethnicity. And also we have Binika Tunggalika, meaning uh, this is also another philosophy, diversity and uh, unity in diversity, because we are so diverse. But then this group never stopped. They still keep, uh, how to say, keep uh, demanding until today. And then there is a changing, I mean, from the names, from Darul Islam, and they become Nagara Islam Indonesia, and now Jamaah Islamia. So they are evolving towards the, uh, the, the changing of times. And then <clears throat> in the past, the Jamaah Islamia, we have two actually terrorist group, which is very uh, big terrorist group, the Jamaah Islamia and uh, ISIS. ISIS actually is imported, imported ism yeah, from from Syria and came to Indonesia. So the Jama Islamia, the original one, the Jama Islamia, they prohibiting women and children involved with violence extremism. So they are in their bylaw, they dis, uh, they not allow the women involved in violence extremism. The role of women is only domestic roles, for example, like giving birth to the new jihadis, educating the new jihadis, and then helping the uh, wife of the uh, uh, about the radical man, uh, the, the terrorist group. Uh, if the if they are uh, arrested, then the wife and the children they have to assist. So very logistic, uh, how to say, domestic roles. But when ISIS came into pictures, they opened the how to say the opportunity for women to participate mm -hmm. in radical groups. But actually, women is being used, in my opinion women is being used by this as their strategy because they're using women to shaming men because men, they're trying to recruit new members, but they cannot uh, get new members. So they use women in order to send message to the men that if women can do why you men cannot do. Yeah? And secondly, because this is strategy, because the woman is considered a dangerous, uh, less dangerous. So the government never think that women can do that. Yeah, because we never have the experience before. So when women carry the bomb, the security might not uh, really put much uh, uh, attention because they, thought, they never thought that women can do that, but actually women can do that. So this is the, and then the third one is that recruiting new personnel because they want to have a ma a many, a many personnel as much as possible. So they are strong if they have new members. So this is, I think run from there, yeah. Yeah, okay. So this is, uh, there are many, when I presented this, they always said, do you think Islam is terrorist? Yeah, because this is, uh, how to say, quite common questions, yeah? Islam is not terrorist, problem, but yeah, but uh, true, Islam is not terrorist, I agree with you. Uh, but uh, because not only, uh, terrorism is not only in Islam, in many other religions, they also have terrorism. So next week, yeah, for example, this is, yeah, uh, I think this is international uh, in India, in New Zealand, where the Muslims are uh, killed in the mosque, and then Myanmar, Rohingya, and also this one. This in, is Indonesian language. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. This is Indonesian language. So actually, terrorism <laughs> is not only, how to say, monopolized by the Muslim, yeah. by the Islam, but yeah. many religions also become, can become a terrorist. Next bit. Yeah, uh, this is the involvement of women. Yeah. So actually, what is happening in Indonesia, the radical movement in Indonesia is not a standalone. 
there is always relations with global. So there is always relations with the global. What happened in the global, it brings effect also to Indonesia. So this is the, you can see the relations between global and Indonesia. When there is Iran revolution, Indonesia responding with Darul Islam. When there is, how to say, Black Widow, uh, suicide bombing in Palestine, we establish Jama Islam, yeah. And then when there is, how to say, uh, uh, how to, uh, uh, 2001, yeah, the uh, WTC, the WTC, and then we also, uh, we have uh, Jama Islamia is also growing very big, yeah. And then they are starting making a, a how to say, a action jihad, what they call jihad. They believe this is a jihad, yeah. So they do the so-called jihad. In Indonesia, there is after we have a reformation era, then the, this group uh, uh, come to the surface and started making making uh, government busy with, with their action because they do bombing everywhere and very close one to another. So many uh, incident, bombing incidents. And at that time, women is not yet involved. But when ISIS came into pictures, uh, but not really directly women uh, uh, how to say involved. I think after 2014, they are declaring ISIS in Syria and followed in Indonesia, but women started involved in 2016. The first suicide bombing in Indonesia, which is done by women. Uh, uh, Bian Julianovi, but his, she's not success because the police already are about caught her. But the, the Surabaya bombing, this is the success one. So the, the women, and they also bring the children. The women bring the children, the very small, small children, nine years old, 12 years old. They know nothing about jihad. They know nothing about politics. They know nothing about uh, heaven, faith, uh, then but the children is also involved, all the family. And they are not come from the full family, they are middle class people. So this is, uh, uh, how to say the, bit move on. So they are, the, how to say, the, the woman is already become an actor of, so of violence. So the radicalism, this is the history we can skip. This is the history of radicalism in Indonesia. Uh, Uh, this is one, the jihad tandem. Yeah? In the past, they have been jihad tandem. Jihad tandem when, oh, means that every jihad movement has to be agreed by the leader. They have leader. This group, uh, whenever people want to do the action, they have to get approval from the leader. If there is no approval from the leader, they cannot do. But when they change, the ISIS came, they change into jihad fardia, where women also have the obligation to do jihad then they don't have to get approval from the leader. They can do it themselves. And the women can also do by themselves. Yeah, yeah this is not Islam. I agree with you. Nice. And next. So this is uh, before the women's only playing in the backyard. They are playing in the backyard. Now they are playing in the front line, in the dining room, meaning that they already like a shifting role of women from the backyard to the dining room, meaning that they are no longer as a victim or an only supporting, but they are also become the actor. Excellent. Yeah, they become the actor. This one, yeah. This is the violations done by Indonesian women. You can imagine they can, they can how to say, do the bombing. This family, the one in the left, mm -hmm. that is the family, all the family died. No, no. By the bomb, uh, they are the suicide bomber. <laughs> the two boys and the two girls, uh, the boys, the two boys go by themselves. They both. The uh, small kids also die. Pardon? The small kids also die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, all yeah. of them. All of them die in the family. All family. All family. And they are from middle class mm -hmm. and educated people. It's true, yes, yes. ISIS. Yeah, yeah, ISIS, yeah. They want to go to the street. Yeah. Train. They will. Uh, they, mm -hmm. They're involving the children, the family, because they want to have a kind of like a uh, Jannah uh, uh, together. together. So they want to go to Jannah together, the family. So they are uh, they will be together. So they do the bombing in Surabaya, and then they was success. The children, uh, the, the mothers not success, but the father and the boys they are success in creating, uh, making a very massive explosion. 
But the mother gave her the bombs. The children also have the bombs with them. They put the bombs in the children's body. These two kids, they have bombs in their body. But they're wearing a kind of like a identity, Islamic identity, meaning wearing burqa, wearing hijab, yeah? black dress, and entering the, mob, the church. Of course, the security suspect on this woman, why the Muslim, why this woman uh, trying to enter the church yeah? during the uh, yes. uh, praying. Yeah? So they stopped the girl, the woman, and they, uh, the security stopped it. And then the mothers pulled the detonator and then blown up. Yeah. So they, all of them died. Yeah. Yeah. And then they are also, how to say, uh, in Sobolga. So woman is already not only she's the success one, but then followed by another woman. So not only this family, but another woman also do the same thing. So like Sibolga, Sibolga is another place. Surabaya is another place. Surabaya is in West Java. Uh, sorry, uh, East Java and Sibolga is in the North Sumatra. So many women now become uh, actor of violence. But not, not so many cases, one or two cases? No, many. I can, I have the, the yeah, number, the, 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 the uh, and, and this is, they're not only do it in Indonesia, they even do it abroad. They are connected with the regions, the Southeast Asia, the Philippines, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, they have the network. The Jama Islamia has the strong network in these four countries, five in Thailand also. So they also exporting the bombers from Indonesia to do the violence against in uh, how to say Philippines. So they're bombing in Philippines, <coughs> husband and wife. Husband and wife did the bombing in Philippines, and they are success because many people died in that bombing. And then uh, even the radical group, they are also recruiting migrant workers. So the migrant workers in Singapore, they recruited them. They helped to brainwash the women. And then this woman, because they are earning money from Singapore, right? So they use the money for financing the terrorist acts. Yeah, I have minutes? Minute? Okay. okay. So the ISISers, the, uh, the ISIS group, they are also recruiting many Indonesian women travel to Syria to join the ISIS. Okay, like give it. So this is even the recruiting police. So they are, they have agenda actually. They already have kind of like a blueprint because they want to change Indonesia to become a caliphate system country from democracy to the caliphate. So they already have a kind of like who should be recruited. So they also uh, recruiting uh, the apparatus, the government officer, the private sector. So they already infiltrated and also brainwashed them. So the police already also uh, recruited and the police wanted to do the suicide bombing also for the records. So how do they involve? Like if, through uh, discipleship, semuanya aja. Through friendship, through marriage also, through dating, so dating also, and then of course social media. Kinship and social media. And this is the online and offline recruitment. So they are not only do offline, but they also do online. Like, uh, move. And this is, they have, uh, this is the involvement from JEI to ISIS. They have different uh, uh, shifting roles, yeah? Like I said before that ISIS, ISIS is opening as wide as possible the role for women. Women can become anything uh, by, uh, for ISIS. So from domestic to uh, suicide bombers. And Irfan also planners. And this is Indonesia who are already uh, arrested for this uh, 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 like terrorism acts, yeah? and this is the different roles they have between Islam Islamia and ISIS. Uh, next week, and the motives, yeah, the motive why the women wanted to join this radical, sacrificing their soul, sacrificing their body and family and money for joining this uh, acts. Yeah, so there is ideological reasons, but not always ideology. Yeah, not also uh, there is political reason, economical reason, cultural reason. But uh, the interesting is the economic, not because they are poor, then they join. No, this is opposite. Like in the Philippines, because they are poor, they join the groups. But in Indonesia, they are poor, but they donate it. 
the money. So they are because of the ideology. So many of the uh, people motivation. Uh, motivations, the ideology, more on ideological motivation. Because when I visited their houses, they are poor, but they want to sacrifice their money to join these groups. So they are poor actually. They can use their money for other purpose, but they prefer to use it for this. So not because of the earning from that group, but they're sacrificing for that group. Okay, like it. And this is also problem in social cohesion and psychological also, mm -hmm. because like you said, domestic violence also one of the cause of women and broken heart like that and wanted to find a new husband. And the narrative, there are so many different narratives. They using, the, uh, the reason why they involved with violence extremism, there are different narratives. Yeah? They heard that uh, the Sunni are slaughtered by the Shi'i, so this is their obligation to help them. And this is the portrait like it. And this is uh, the bid'ah. This is like cultural, because in Islam we have a kind of like, uh, how to say, yasima, uh, ritual. Uh, ritual that they consider as pita. And this is also about the children because there are so many uh, children's, how to say, uh, cases, children being raped, children being mutilations, and the, the parents are spared. So they try to find a new country that can help uh, protecting the children. So there are many reasons. It's not always about ideology. Okay, last bit, any idea? This is another narrative. You can read yeah. later. Yeah. This is the impact. Actually, why we do it? Because this, if they do this, they also get the negative impact. Yeah, like bullying, stigmatized, rejected by society, difficult to find a job, and even uh, many cases that uh, parents died because of their actions, mm -hmm. because the parents cannot uh, accept it. So when they got bullied from the community, they got heart attack and die. So this is why we try to stop it. Yeah? Okay. So this is now why we do this because yeah, we want to understand that pathway. Like my organizations, we are doing and we are assisting those people because we want to know their pathway. So we know how to design appropriate inter intervention to deconstruct their thought and to de-radicalize them and cut them from their network. So, yeah, you can like it. And unlock them from the second. They build the confidence. Yeah, and this is why we do this. We want also change them. So this is what we have been done. I even though I'm a woman, but we are also assisting the men. So not only women. Yeah. So women assisting the men, and women are also assisting. So we are actually assisting these people. These people, the the uh, the one with birth, red birth. Yeah, she is actually the notorious terrorist. His head is really expensive. America hunted him, Australia hunted him, Pakistan hunted him, and Philippines also hunted him. And then he's very expensive man. But now he's already de-radicalized totally. And I am really uh, have a good... Uh, he has a de-radicalized. De de-radicalized. He's a this is like saluting to the. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've been covering. Yeah, she's celebrating uh, the racing. She's uh, uh, he's raising the flag of Indonesian flags during the Independence Day. So now he already back to Indonesia. He's working with you. He's still in the prison. In the prison. He's still in the prison, sentenced for twenty years. And this one, the the yellow one, the mm -hmm. one with waving, he's actually he went to Syria joining uh, ISIS and then when he come back he was uh, how to say uh, in prison arrested and then he was in the prison he was radicalized but after that he realized when he was in the prison and when he had, when he was released from the prison he realized and then he de radicalized himself and this is the, uh, the the other side this is also he went to the Philippines joining the Abu Sayyaf group and then he was uh, in prison, and now he is already there radicalized. So, this is I'm not only assisting women, but also the men. Yeah, this is uh, this is also those are uh, the above uh, the uh, uh, terrorist uh, prisoners that apa uh, uh, terrorist uh, offenders, and also the one the below one. He is actually traveling to Syria also, and he returned to Indonesia. 
So this is what we are doing uh, to make them back to Indonesia, to de-radicalize them. Yeah. Okay, like this. Uh, this is the success story. This is all the terrorists, former terrorist inmates. Yeah? And the, but not always success. This is also a sad story, which we consider not success because some of them are, there are a few of them back to the prison and the business, we, we providing capital support, but business fail. And they are also back also to the network. They cannot study in the prison and the radicalizations that we are doing, is it really they radicalize them or only disengage them? Disengage them from violence, but they are not really totally changing. So beside my organization, there are so many interventions by the by Indonesian civil society, like Interfaith Dialogue by Aman, Peace Handren by Irfan, uh, Infit also make a risk assessment tool, model in uh, handling terrorism, terrorism offenders for prison and parole officer. There is also early warning system building by the uh, building community resilience, yeah, done by Empathy Tool and Peace Villages by Wahid Foundation. Mm -hmm. And then also Habibi Center, they create database on terrorism cases in Indonesia. And with a uh, woman peace promoter, this is our national counter terrorism agency. They also have program and many others. So we already done so many things, yeah, but terrorism is still there. <laughs> <laughs> It's still there and in number increasing. So we we oh. need to fight. But if they are not around, how could you fight? <laughs> we need someone to fight. Okay. Okay. Fighting. Yeah. Okay. fighting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh If you have any question, uh, clarification or sharing uh, in the context of uh, Bangladesh or South Asia or also Indonesia and Southeast Asia, please feel free to drop uh, your question uh, on in the chat room because I'm not going to open the question now. We, we have very limited uh, uh, time, but I'm proceeding to the second uh, session that will uh, uh, moderate it. Yes. Some tea, tea break. Uh, no, no, we don't have time. Oh. <laughs> we don't have time. I'm sorry. So tea, tea, I think tea within me. Just sort of like this. So uh, the second session uh, will be moderating by Ashraf Ali, and uh, now I hand over to uh, Brother Ashraf. So you will see the connection from the previous section. We mapping the situation. Uh, from political dynamics, the 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 increasing you know intolerance among Muslim society, and also the contribution of uh, education institution to uh, influence the radical uh, thinking among the young generation, and also the, the reality that that uh, terrorism are still there and women. Uh, uh, engage in uh, terrorism uh, more. So then, uh, now we are we are seeing that the other situation where uh, a lot of intervention has been done in Bangladesh and also uh, Indonesia. And you will hear some of the good practice that was shared by uh, the speaker, brother. We will conclude the question later. We don't after have after both sessions are still with Over to Brother Asaf, can you move here? His hours is 11.30, but in Indonesia and Malaysia is one hour. Just early. This is the benefit of non-conventional. 
so assalamu alaikum yes thank you okay uh assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dear friends uh this is second session we have already going 20 minutes late 20 minutes late so i request all the speaker to stick them within uh, 12 minutes 12 minutes will be you know cover within timeline so uh, the the session is promoting inclusiveness and tolerance in school so the two things promote inclusiveness and tolerance two things are uh, very important in our life in our social life basically because inclusiveness everywhere we are we are looking we are seeing that exclusiveness is exclusiveness is promoting very high instead of inclusiveness in terms of uh, education in terms of religious in terms of uh, social life and second is tolerant tolerant is the only tool where we can respect each other so tolerance and inclusiveness so before uh, i'm going to uh, call my uh, brother irfan amili from indonesia uh, is uh, going to speak on promoting tolerance among youth best practice from indonesia irfan amili he is is from peace generation indonesia please we come here i'm here oh, okay thank you okay my sir Okay, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Brother Ashraf. Uh, I, I will have uh, 20 minutes to run through yeah. the... Eh. 12? Oh, I think 20. 12, 12 minutes. <laughs> okay, I have to go faster. So, uh, allow me to share our not best practice, but maybe, maybe one of good practice, not the best one. Uh, so, uh, Peace Generation has been 14 years uh, teaching peace through... Uh, using creative media and for the last five years we are incorporating games and digital media to teach young people about the peace and countering violent extremism this program is uh, supported by UNDP and TPIM where uh, Fikri is working now Yeah, uh, if we have, if we see the layers of the violent extremism, there are at, at least three layers. And Fikri from PPIM has been has explained about the about the situation according to the the research done by PPIM. And Peace Generation is working not in the violent extremism as but that they uh, doing is doing and PPIM uh, radicalism. The, the second layer also peace generation is not working here but peace generation is working in the in the first layer intolerance so intolerance is related to prejudice uh, the poor of critical thinking fanatism and lack of empathy uh, if we i would like to start from the story this is uh, the corner the bottom corner this is the pictures of some junior high schoolers in one of area in indonesia they show the flag of ISIS, and I know their teachers. Uh, her name is Mbak Ninin. Mbak Ninin is our teacher who joined our training. And she came to me, <clears throat> told us that she has the, the, these students. And she, do, she doesn't know how to start the conversation with them, how to open the conversation about their thoughts about. Uh, peace about the radicalism etc until 
Mbak Ninin, Bu Ninin, Miss Ninin uh, join our training board game for peace. So she learned how to use board game as a tools familiar with the millennials. And to make the short story, to make the story short, yeah, uh, if we know that millennials are driving the board game revival in the industry. So the millennials and Z generation are gamers generation. So they are very familiar with games. In Indonesia, game has been used by many sectors like anti-corruption. It's very successful. And if we see here, as uh, Professor Ani said, that young people don't want to listen anymore to the to the to their parents because. Uh, why generation they don't look up to the authority they look up to the peer pressure and influence and that's why game because it's influence and peer pressure is very uh, effective and there are some examples how games has been used by many many education sectors and so we start the program uh, called board game for peace how we measure the the program the first one we measure the reach how effective the tools and how how wide the reach of the, the program and the second one is satisfaction rate sometimes we do some program and see that the participants are not enthusiastic enthusiastic and they don't have the, uh, the satisfaction rate is very low so we, we cannot expect that, that the program can be effective. And also we see the, the cost. Many program is very high cost, but the low impact. And also the traction. How are you attracted to, to access our content? And the, the, another thing, the change. How participants change or how our program change their mind. And the last one is retention. We see after one year, are they still using our media or they forgot? Uh, all the media and just uh, just go to another activities and our program uh, board game for peace started in uh, in, to, uh, in the beginning only train 10 people so they they are the training the trainers for the training the trainers for the the, the students and ibu ninin miss ninin is one of the teacher they who join our the first training and we start in bandung and next to solo surabaya and we within two years we reach uh, 12 cities in indonesia and you can see the increase of the number of uh, the trainers and the number of the students reached by the, the program in the end of the program almost five thousand people or students reached by the program this is the program so the guys that show the flag of isis now became the part of the program there was the interesting story where miss ninin uh, initially cannot uh, convince the students to play the game because they perceive that the game is not part of the islam game is something from the west <laughs> and it's like uh, shubhat or haram like that but after they play and they found that the game actually teach them the value of islam because the game is designed as not competitive game but the collaborative game so if you play the game i can, i i'm sure that you will fail the game because you assume that you have to compete with other people and that's the way we are taught in the school you have to compete you have to be winner you have to be so that's why the the world is uh, <laughs> not peaceful because everyone is competing we have, we have a for games oh yes <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah after after playing games so they present what the value of the game and they found that this is the hook about the ukhwa about, about the town, about the tolerance, tasamun, everything. So we package all the value that's explained by Professor Azra in the game. So this is the value of Islam. But young people, they are not, they don't want to be preached. 
they want they don't want to be told they just like playing so this is the secret of the game why the game can enter effectively to the young people's mind and after they play they uh, ask or they invite other people to to play in the public space and also post it in in the social media and we count all the people join the the program through social media this is the numbers how the growth of the players because if you teach someone and you ask them to teach other people most likely it's very difficult because if you have if you want to teach them you need like the class you need something formal but game you just need them maybe at the table or even in in the in the field yeah in the garden you can play it so it's very effective and this is the satisfaction rate this is very very important to see if our program effective or not because the nps score in score is used by the industry to know how effective some product there are three kind of people so, someone who very satisfied satisfied as not not satisfied so we only consider the extremely satisfied people so the score is 71 71 the satisfaction rate it means it's most likely people will promote the program and in terms of the budget uh, actually we have to be transparent to see if our program is effect, costly effective or not yeah because this will determine the acquisition cost how many people how, how much money you have and how many people will be the beneficiaries this is uh, so the total program budget uh, divided to the beneficiaries and this is the acquisition cost also we incorporate we are collaborating with the biggest learning platform in indonesia ruang guru and the reach also is very high within three months and also we made uh, the campaign through social media with the hashtag meyakini menghargai or uh, meyakini is faithful and respectful yeah we don't use tolerance because in indonesia some people perceive tolerance is something related with the secularism or or liberal thing with which is this is not acceptable to in conservative yeah so we don't use the tolerance uh, this and if you see this is the number of the rich 1 million people reached by the campaign and the the green bar it means the positive responses and the red bar is negative responses so we we got the very small negative responses because we avoid the controversial words and it it prevent the rejection and to to see or to measure the impact to measure the impact we use pens violent extremism disposition scales these tools uh, developed by daido and it consists of power system acceptance to aggression intolerance conventionalism and etc so for example we measure before and after the program there was the decrease of the aggressive action the acceptance to aggression and we see the female has more change than the male and the acceptance uh, this is violent permissible in the reaction of injustice the the disagree is increased by 17 uh, percent Uh, also this is acceptance to aggression with this uh, with this question or statement i can react very rudely if someone insult and uh, disagree also is increasing by 22 <coughs> percent also in, in terms of tolerance the we don't need to protect about the protect and respect yeah we don't need so the the perception of intolerance is also decreasing and again the female has a bigger 
<laughs> yeah. This is the uh, the the measurement and if we see every single area has different changes and we found Aceh has the highest changes. I don't know why but I guess because Aceh has experience about the conflict so they have uh, intent, big intention to change the situation and so that's why the Aceh has the biggest point compared to other other areas and we we confront the the measurement using the numbers or uh, with the story of change so we interview them to to dig more what the change they experience through this program and we have uh, several testimonials or story of change from them how the program has changed them and uh, yeah the program actually has completed two years ago but up to now the program is still going on in some several areas and we found that this board game has a uh, long-term impact and uh, sustainability and for the last two years we continue the program this is this program is for high school and now we are using the same media for the university now we are working with the two univers biggest university in bandung as the response to the other uh, other findings that the intolerance also infiltrate to the uh, university thank you You still mute? You still mute, Ashraf, Ashraf, you still mute. We don't hear anything. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, brother. What is it like? You will hear. Parvez. So I would request uh, Mr. Parvez, Parvez Siddiqui, who will present the present youth and counter narrative case study of Bangladesh. Yeah. Because otherwise it's like bouncing. Yeah. 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 I think I don't know if you No, you have to use it. I have to use Okay. Okay. Is it okay now? Yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, and welcome to Bangladesh. And this is very important um, uh, dialogue today. Uh, basically, I will just share some cases that we have uh, implemented in Bangladesh, and we have faced in Bangladesh. Could you please the second slide? Next slide. Next slide. Okay. Uh, in Bangladesh, but the common scenario about the youth is that you know um, youth are frustrated about their future, and that is the uh, that is the main uh, you know uh, causes of you know uh, to be uh, indicator or contributing factors for the radicalization. And there is a very limited space for peace building and become an active citizen in Bangladesh, and. Uh, sometimes we we found we found that the lack of unemployment or skills something uh, you know factor contributing the uh, 
uh, radicalization. But in Bangladesh, when we, we found in, in 2016, the Holy Artisan and others, uh, important uh, terrorist attack, basically this is, uh, this is very rare because they are uh, from the very good family background and economically very good, but they are radicalized because of ideology, not for unemployment. And uh, the other problem is the lack of rural model and mentoring program for youth in Bangladesh. And the important factor for the university students or uh, graduate, the mismatch between the skills and the opportunity in the market. <clears throat> so for uh, almost for South Asia, Bangladesh is a common, uh, you know, corruption, repression, structural motivator factor, factor inequality, and the lack of governance especially the uh, very weak institution uh, is the factor that is triggering you to involve with radicalized group or in Bangladesh. Uh, and uh, could you please the second, uh, next slide? Okay, so and individuals, they are basically uh, in Bangladesh, the common that is they, they have a, some rewarding opportunity that after that you will get, you know, have and something like that. And uh, uh, some are, uh, you know, ridiculous by self, you know, uh, in just uh, maybe last year in Australia, the, one female was arrested because of it. she was self radicalized and um, she migrated to Australia to just uh, to be a, uh, for the terrorist activities. And after arrival in Australia, she just, you know, stepped her landlord. So she is sentenced to 40 years jail. So they are not, you know, connected with any groups or something. They are self radicalized. And when uh, Bangladesh government and police, uh, you know, uh, went to her home in Dhaka, her sister also stepped to the police. So whole family was radicalized by this, uh, you know. Uh, so, and uh, uh, this is individuals, uh, this is another contributing factor in Bangladesh. Uh, to be uh, uh, the uh, uh, radicalization. Uh, next slide, please. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And others that that is you know like we 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 got the Indonesian network something. We have some very close relation with ISS and other international group who are basically pulling the our youth. From the from the community and for the university, they are targeting the very meritorious students. So we found that the best university in our country, like Bangladesh University of Engineering, the private university, the brilliant students they're targeting. So uh, as they're very brilliant and they do not have any space to you know uh, uh, for building these building activities, so very easily they are radicalized through this group. So that is very you know some uh, important uh, uh, you know. Um, Really, uh, radicalized group uh, we found the last couple of years, uh, Allah Dal, Mujahideen, something like that. Uh, so that is, you know, I don't know that in, in maybe two, uh, five to 10 years ago, this, in 16 district, we found it 16 district, there was bombing to inform, there, there is no death violence, but to inform the uh, audience that we are here. Yeah, so that is uh, very strongly existence of uh, this radicalized group who are pulling our youth in the community, in the educational institution, and especially the very best educational institution in the country. So that is the enabling factor. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, for the, uh, uh, you know, macro push factor that I also, uh, that is, you know, uh, uh, you know, this is the very, uh, serious challenges in our country that after ACC, the higher secondary examination, students have huge challenge to access to education in the university. So they are frustrated. This is a transition period of the youth. And then after graduation, you know, there is no job for these students, especially the from the National University graduate. They don't have a job opportunity in, in the country. But the, and even from the very good university. So that is we have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, we can address uh, uh, that I mentioned that uh, mismatch with the skills and others uh, earlier. And uh, another socioeconomic inequality that uh, so the pull factor that is by USAID, you know, mentioned in the uh, push and pull factor. So it's also the common in Bangladesh that is, uh, you know, uh, and also 
the some in the name of political group that is there is islamic caliph or something like that mm -hmm. uh, so in uh, recent year bangladesh government bent some in this kind of uh, you know political group to operate in bangladesh but they are doing uh, without any uh, uh, in the queue. yeah yeah so without registration or without government permission but they're doing the activities so um, from Film for Peace Foundation, we basically started a peace building initiatives uh, from 2017, and uh, we started from the community and the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, we both started from the uh, from the education institutions and also, uh, you know, from the community peace building initiatives uh, through you know holistic approach. Mm -hmm. So we um, uh, we'll share some activities that I, I think we uh, we found a very good result uh, to engage the youth and the community to prevent violent extremism in Bangladesh. Next slide, please. Uh, for the individual levels, that also are the causes of you know uh, the uh, the frustration, unemployment, and the personal identification. And we we uh, we uh, we we intervened the number of programs. That is, we use the sports, film, theater, cultural activities, and also the you know um, counseling and the career opportunity for the youth uh, so that help them to engage you on, on uh, multicultural activities and the promoting tolerance and activities so that helps students to you know to critically analyze the situation think twice before you know uh, decide anything that helps and also from the university is help them to peer education especially uh, for the film tools that we used in, uh, as an intervention, that is very effective tools that we used only in Bangladesh uh, from the beginning, only organization from Film for Peace Foundation. We provided training to the youth from the uh, from the different universities and colleges, and then we provided skills to the youth on filmmaking. They make film on related to tolerance, peace, and multiculturalism and diversity. And then after the you know. Um, making the film, they are screening to the, their university and the community. So they are owning, you know, uh, their film, this is their films and about the tolerance, about the peace, about the diversity. So to the interactive dialogue from the university, they, uh, you know, they, they can award the other students on, uh, uh, you know, even the film is a very powerful tools. So they can motivate other students to not engage in, you know, violent extremism and to education of tolerance or something like that. So I will just share some pictures uh, and activities. Uh, could you please the next slide, please? Uh, that is one initiative that we, we in the community level. We started first from the, uh, you know, southeast uh, part of the Bangladesh. This is from the Cox the district. You know that this is one of the very vulnerable districts after the Rohingya. Uh, yeah, uh, arrival. So we started there and we engaged the community youth and we, we, we provided leadership training to the youth and from the community and then they, you know, from the school and community, they are, you know, providing tolerance and uh, um, diversity uh, information and education to the community peoples and their friends. Uh, next slide, please. And that I mentioned that promoting multicultural peaceful society through films. So that is basically we provided uh, skills to the youth and uh, on multiculturalism and peace and tolerance. Uh, so th they are providing information to the, you know, and educate to the community and this course. And that is the logo of, uh, you know, of this uh, film. Next slide, please. This is also the, you know, that we identify the young people and then we support them to, the, to be active citizen through films and education uh, and uh, other cultural programs. Next slide, please. Uh, and uh, here you can see that some, uh, you know, uh, very um, prestigious university teacher from Dhaka University and other university teachers, and, and also we engage the government officials to, uh, you know, to engage youth on uh, creative activities, because it's, this is not only uh, engaging the youth, but also creating the job opportunity because, you know, that uh, this is the uh, creative industry era because they can they can they can earn money from the youtube they can earn money from the facebook they can earn money from the you know local photography and other things so that is also oh, another opportunity for the livelihood next please and did that is the film that about the you know uh, 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 the, the the student made and promoted to their community 
-hmm. So, and we provided all the supports and through the poster, like professional filmmakers. Yes. So they feel mm -hmm. proud and they're going there and, uh, and they are, uh, you know, communicating with their friends that we made this film about the extremism, about the violence also. That is very important. Next, please. And also we, 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 we give them, that is, a, you know, one of the, uh, he's the um, vice chancellor of uh, Asha University, that is one of the leading five universities, but he was the founder of Peace and Conflict Studies Department of Dhaka University. He, and others, uh, you know, uh, we, we provided the space, the art platform to this youth the, through the premier show and award ceremony. That is, uh, you know, I think uh, that is identity crisis and creating platform for the youth is very important role that we, next slide please. Mm -hmm. Also, he's uh, that you know, Dhaka University professor. He's also you know how you uh, that is we we are trying to connect the young professionals, university professors, and the role model with the youth, so that they can motivate it with the role model. So that that is the lack of role model in our country that for the youth. That is another important factor that contributing to the you know violent extremism group. Next, please. That is, we first, uh, uh, you know, in 2019, we organized a, a peace film festival. Basically, from this group, uh, we invited the state uh, information minister, uh, you know, to involve the government and the leading, uh, you know, um, uh, leading celebrity artist with the young filmmaker and, and professional filmmaker with this youth, so that they can feel proud. So through, the, so they have opportunity to skin their film with the professional filmmaker. So we provided and we awarded this young youth as a, you know, to motivate them to engage for the peace activities. Next please. This is, uh, you know, that's some pictures uh, of a uh, film festival. Mm -hmm. uh, could you please this next slide please. And this is just uh, information minister of the government. So government is, uh, we, we try to go, government acknowledge and inform the audience that we should work for the peace, we should work for against the violence extremist group. So we invited, this is very one of the very powerful minister of the country. So we invited him to, you know, to speak on uh, uh, peace promotion. Next, please. This is one of the uh, very uh, popular uh, film actress. She also awarded from the Cannes Film Festival. So we invited her to uh, motivate our uh, uh, students and uh, youth group. Next, please. And also uh, uh, youth through the you know, cultural activities from music and dance for peace. That this is basically, uh, you know, uh, we included for this program. So that, uh, because that is the, you know, in earlier Bangladesh is the pool of culture of countries. But recent years, we are all, fighting for the money and economical something like that. We do not have any space, uh, any time for the family, time for the uh, society and something like that. Uh, and uh, next please. And uh, finally, we, we are uh, honoring this youth with, with certificate and crest so that they can be uh, uh, become an ambassador for peace in their community and the institution. And I think, and they are basically, as they, we are using tools, the film, they're basically, uh, some are now becoming a very good filmmaker for the young filmmaker and YouTuber in the, in the community. So they are feeling prestigious. So I think that is very important that if you, if you do not provide uh, the, another platform or space for the youth, they will be easily derailed to the violent extremism group. And that is very important. So we try to provide this space. Yeah, I am. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, uh, some, Next, please. I think pictures tell the stories that, yeah. 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 Another piece, last one. And this is, you know, up to the, uh, that is, this picture is from the Cox's Bazaar and other pictures from the Dhaka. Mm -hmm. So that is, you know, we, we bring the leading filmmaker from the Dhaka, national filmmaker to the Cox's Bazaar. Mm -hmm. And they have opportunity to interact. They, they they got your information about the television and newspaper about this leading filmmaker when they found them before you know and interact so they, that is the uh, you know opportunity to interact with the role model filmmaker so that is that is also an important factor to engage uh, youth on countering violent extremism uh, next please and this is, you know, that uh, they are making films. This woman, is, even is still now, she can, she cannot, you know, open her 
neck up, you know, and but now she's uh, carrying her camera and telling their stories, the community stories. So we are just providing the support and uh, information, but they're doing this. So that is very important tools that we use earlier and very successful because uh, both European Union and USA are very happy about these tools. And they, the, uh, they, they also, you know, uh, displayed this information history. So their Facebook pages in, in, in earlier. Next, please. I just uh, show that this is the leading uh, filmmaker who are Bangladeshi. They don't, that Moshid al Islam, he's the uh, national uh, award winning filmmaker. And, and that is uh, other, you know, the uh, next slide, please. Uh, that is, you know, the film from Coxman's youth group. They they made film about the Rohingya. You know, after the Arab Rohingya, that the humanity film is, you know, about the intolerance between host community and the Rohingya community. So to promote tolerance between host and Rohingya community, this youth made this film. That is to acknowledge that how the uh, community, especially the host community, supported the Rohingya people when they arrived. And after everybody international community so that they can acknowledge that they supported us to reduce that intolerance so others you know the jibon or golpo that is uh, especially about the you know youth frustration and job mismatch and job opportunity and broken dream about the human trafficking this is after the ringer rebel human trafficking increased dramatically in cox's budget mm -hmm. so all the issues related to the their community they made their film and they skin to the community people and the policy maker in the community. Next, and that is also you know we also we, we uh, put this Facebook about the fake news. Uh, so in Cox's Bazaar and you know see nothing over in in Brahmanbaria, there is too many you know fake news and the violence. So we we promoted this uh, 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 this film made by this youth to the community just to, to you know to aware about the misinformation and disinformation the fake news mm -hmm. so that is also uh, imp the important role that we can think about it uh, next please <laughs> and this is a case studies just uh, 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 when they after the uh, they are now doing their youtube and something like that uh, next please and also, you know, community engagement mobilization. Uh, so, community, are, you know, this is this is the first time in Bangladesh in the community level that we we organized the international peace day. And also, we in Cox's budget, we, what we we first did, we awarded the community peace builder, with the local administration, and the local uh, government uh, political representative, so that they can, they can own that what they have did for the you know done for the society as a peace builder. So that is very important that to motivate them because they never always we honored the national heroes, not the comedy heroes. So we first achieve this, you know. Next, please. I think uh, that's cultural activities, of course. We get that because we first from the beginning, I do we there is a lack of a space for the youth and the community people in the community level. In in the union, we found that there is no playground for the youth. So uh, here, you know, a, a union for a union council members and and the, the school teacher all participated for the sports and the Hindu, Muslim, and other they participated and they watched this uh, game. So that is very important. And in earlier, we have this opportunity, but now we do not have this opportunity. So we try to restore this culture of traditions of Bangladeshi culture in the community level, so that people respect each other, they can interact each other and promote tolerance. I think this kind of activities, uh, you know, culture uh, we uh, we organize in uh, in the community level, in the national level, and that I think uh, you know helps to uh, you know uh, really, uh, engage youth to prevent violence extremism in Bangladesh. And that is all from uh, from my point of view. This my time is over. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Bhai and uh, Bhai. Thank you, uh, Parvez Bhai, uh, for your uh, doing a tremendous job uh, on youth tolerance. So, so now I would request Mr. Atik Kapipin uh, speak the role of religious teachers and standing modernization religion. Mr. Atik. Okay. Thank you, Ashraf. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Um, Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim wa bihi nasta'inu ala umuri dunia wa din wassalatu wassalamu ala asrofil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain amma ba'd. Um, dear all participants both offline and online in Indonesia, in Bangladesh, or maybe in India. I uh, would say Alhamdulillah we can meet virtual through this event. And I would like to say thank you to the committee from Aman Indonesia and Antar Bangladesh. I think this is a um, limited opportunity for a teacher like me, like us, to have this event. Um, uh, I'd like to have a uh, share screen facilities, please. Yes, we already opened the access. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, this afternoon, we, in my session, we will talk about the role of religious teacher in strengthening our moderation in religion. Um, in my view, the title above needs to be explained through the following for a substitute this one. Uh, number one is the religious education in Indonesia needed to be moderate, is why so? And the second one is uh, religious moderation teaching content. And then the third one uh, will be the role of Islamic education teacher personally or individually. And then the fourth one will be the role of Islamic education teacher as a group, uh, the four group description above will provide an overview to order the uh, arrive at the conclusion about the role of uh, religious education, um, Islamic education teacher. Sorry. <clears throat> I uh, uh, fortunately for me, this is only, I only have about six slides to explain my thought here. And because the, the time is very limited, right? All right, um, let's continue with the first, first part. There are four things that need to be considered why in Indonesia need for religious moderation in the education environment. More precisely in schools and madrasas. First one is the, uh, we know, what is it, um, a million diversity, a million diversity. We know that Indonesia is a very large country consisting of thousands of islands, a population more than 250 million people and has many differences in language, ethnicity, social status, culture, and also religion. If not managed properly, these differences about, above will lead to division, conflict, and maybe even war. And second, in countries outside of Indonesia and Bangladesh, there have been clashes, wars, and killings for a long time in Africa, Ireland, Afghanistan, in the Middle East, and the other countries. In particular, the conflict in the Middle East turned out to have a very strong influence on the disturbance of stability in Indonesia. There were a lot of um, what was it, students from Indonesia. And I think also, uh, maybe it was wrong when I heard uh, before, because I heard uh, no more uh, extremists in Bangladesh. I heard like that before. 
um, who decide who besides studying there, I mean, the uh, in the Middle East, but also adopted religious ideas from the Middle East. Some of them from the Middle East, of course. Now, and this idea has turned out to be a headline, believing that religion should be spread in any way. That's a global influence. So influenced by global development in increasing violence, anti-tolerant or intolerant, racism and other anti-peace movement. The third one, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, so many speaker here was um, explained this one, wrong understanding of religion. There is a misunderstanding of Islam. A small part of the community believes that religion should be spread by any means, war, violence, retaliation, even murder and bombing. I believe this is a wrong understanding because Islam is a religion of peace. The main purpose of sending Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was to perfect morals. Islam is a religion that teaches respect for others, even for those of different religions. So that's um, the third one. Let's come to the fourth one. This is this reason is the most important reason why the word of education in Indonesia needs a touch of religious moderation. Because of religious misunderstanding, belief misunderstanding that lead in intolerance, feeling right that others are wrong, it had rich students based on, rich, on the research. Uh, I think some of the, Mr. Fikri has been explained about one, uh, but, but done by Wahid Foundation, Satara Institute, UN Jakarta saw that some students have been influenced by anti-peace movements, misunderstanding in the implantation of religion. That, that's the why we need to be uh, to what was it to have the moderation in religion. And the last one will be that was um, I mean really student info. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the next to the next um what is it um slide. Uh, Mr. Ati, yes. I think the slide is not uh, moving, so maybe you can reshare again. Or oh, which one? It's still in the first. It's still in the first slide. Oh, okay. It's already on the fourth one. <laughs> Sorry. So you can uh, close it and then share it again. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, I already talked about the, the, the first slide. Okay. Ha have you seen the first slide? Um, who is it? Nani? Oh, well. Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, this is the, what was it? The religious moderation teaching. Uh, mm -hmm. Content, right? Um, content. In, in relation to the importance of learning that is contrary to ideas and doctrines that teach violence, intolerance, and other form of entities, it is necessary to teach material or content that have a, a strong foundation, relying on the, on the truth of the truth um, of the Quran and Hadith. And based on that situation, some of Islamic scholars, especially uh, the ulama from Pasantren Saiko, succeeded in formulating eight very important contents. Um, some of them say more than eight, 
the eight content are is so you can have a look here. Number one is uh, Tawasut. Um, it's uh, taking the middle way, and then the second one will be the Tawazun. It's balance, and then Iatidal, stride and the firm, and then the next one will be Aulawia. It's we need priority in our life. And then the next one will be shuro or deliberation. And then musawa is uh, egalitarian. And then tasamu is tolerance. The last one will be isla or reformation. Well, uh, this is um, the was it the eight uh, religious moderation teaching content. We try to help students this uh, was it uh, knowledge about this one. So um, I believe when they understand the age of uh, or at least one or maybe two, they, they will be uh, one of the religious moderation agent. OK, um, the, the next one. We are going to domain of the of our of my uh, presentation what is the role of islamic education teacher as personal individual but number one is uh, this is the, the most important thing i think uh, it's we have to be uh, to being a model a teacher should be an example in the application of religious moderation in everyday life in everyday life also only in thoughts right and the second one is uh, does the the eight the eight was it a concept or content? It should be teach uh, the religious moderation. Uh, wrong religious understanding needs to be continuously strengthened through the learning process. And the next step will be uh, influencing school management. Uh, we as a teacher is one of the part of the school management. So uh, school management needs to be invited and influenced uh, to support religious moderation program. Um, the, I think the, what's it, the, the, the role of being a model, it's the, the last one, sorry. Uh, the next one will be, the, will be to provide input. You know, we, we uh, School or madrasa have a specific curriculum, specific purpose to, to achieve. So uh, there are some curriculum designer. As a teacher, personally, or maybe as a group, uh, we can provide input to curriculum design to incorporate religious moderation material or subject into the curriculum, both intra and extra curriculum. So um, that's uh, the role of Islamic education teacher, personally as personal as individual. So what about the group? We have a group. Uh, I think it's a big group. Okay. And this is uh, Akbai, uh, one of the associates of teacher in Indonesia, especially in uh, Islamic education. Agbay uh, has 34 of 34 provinces in Indonesia. So all provinces in Indonesia has uh, a member of Agbay. From 515 cities and districts, we have uh, 315 uh, what is it, committee in that cities or districts. We have around 104,820 registered member, registered member. Uh, unregistered member, it could be all the PAI teacher, um, I mean, Islamic education teacher. And we have activities for strategic planning, school office, pioneer teacher of moderation. I mean, I, mean uh, I think this is one of the uh, was it activity that uh, related to this discussion? 
uh, we try to have a KT, a, a great digital KT, I mean, is a member card. Right? And then self capacity building, workshop, seminar. I think uh, some of the of the speaker here have, have been, uh, have, what was it, um, collaboration with us. I have Lupa Irfan Amali and someone else, I think. And the last one is, um, we has been involved in various terrorism preventing program and uh, religious moderation since 2009 in various cities in Indonesia. Well, I think that the, the two uh, uh, last uh, presentation is the main thing of my presentation. That's it for me, I think. Uh, thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Brother Atik, for your presentation. It's a marvelous presentation. Now I would request uh, our brother, Dr. Abdul Aziz, uh, who is from BIIT Bangladesh. He'll speak on PV, PVE program in the school of Bangladesh. I would request him to speak. Uh, we have to finish it by 12.40. So very minimum time I'm giving you. So please, I request you to please uh, speak on uh, Okay. Good. <clears throat> so, dear moderators, respected guests and participants, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. This is uh, Dr. Ahmad Aziz, Executive Director of Bangladesh Institute of Islamic Thought and country representative International Institute of Islamic Thought based in USA, and also faculty member in the Department of Technical and Vocational Education, Islamic University of Technology, OIC Kajipur. So now I'm presenting on the PBE program in the school. Okay. So. Huh? They will operate for you. You do need oh. to do that. Okay. Yes. Okay, introduction. Uh, so we need to see this next slide, and not this one. No, you just uh, okay. say next okay. slide. Yes, okay, thank you. So before uh, going to my specific issues on PBE in school, uh, just uh, uh, I'm relooking the issues, what is violent extremism? All of you are aware about these things. I think uh, you know that violent, violent extremism refers to the use of violence in line with an ideological commitment to achieve political, religious, and social goals. These violent acts can be carried out by an individual or group from a range of beliefs and ideologies. Next. So factors of violent extremism. According to UNESCO uh, in 2016, they defined uh, uh, there are some factors, push factors and full, full factors. Push factors includes marginalization, inequality, discrimination, persecution, or the perceptions thereof, the denial of rights and civil liberties, environmental, historical, and socioeconomic gradients, whether actual or perceived. And pull factors includes a source of services and employment, providing outlets for grievance, the promise of hope, the promise of justice, a sense of purpose, a sense of acceptance and validation. Next. <clears throat> so now I'm going uh, to a PBE. What is PBE? Preventive violent extremism. It refers to an approach which aims to address the root cause of violent extremism through non- uh, uh, non-coercive approaches. In an educational context, 
PBE could, uh, for example, include working through schools to address inequality push factors in the curriculum, for example, by building trust and tolerance between different groups of children and youth, and strengthening community social cohesion, building relationship based on trust within communities in an essential component of PBE. Next. So there are some thematic values of PBE. All these are positive measures, I think. So, uh, it includes tolerance, patriotism, non-communalism, solidarity, mutual respects, uh, fraternity, empathy, empathy, forgiveness, humanity, pluralism, freedom, positivism, religiosity, integrity, justice, and sympathy. Next. So here are some PB strategy in general. And then I'll go to the specific issues on education. So the general PB strategies is addressing the extremist ideology through alternative narratives, alternative narratives, effort for demystifying and deconstructing extreme masses, mitigate the ethno social and political tensions among different groups, resolve the disputes and promoting national integration, disrupting resource and funding of violent extremist groups, de-radicalization and rehabilitation program of extremists, building national consensus. These are the, uh, in addition, there are some other PB strategies generally making governments, governance more effective and inclusive, anti-corruption corruption effort, security and justice initiatives, addressing poverty and unemployment, investment in education, encouraging independent media outlets, countering organized crimes. Next. These are the plan of action to prevent violent extremism uh, suggested by UNESCO. These are the things addressing, I think uh, all of you are uh, aware about these things, addressing drivers of violent extremism, setting, setting the policy, make, policy framework, and taking actions. There are seven priority areas. I didn't go to the details area because my focus is in ed education. Okay, next please. So PB in education. In the challenge, in the challenges to all form of violent extremism, uh, far right and far left, educational institutions are often tasked to play a role. There is a mass of literature globally on the role of school and universities in tackling extremism. There have been a considerable number of conferences, uh, considerable number of conferences run by the international agency, agencies and academic institutions to explore the role of uh, education in countering violent extremism or preventing violent extremism. The vast bulk of this is prescriptive, what the school ought to be doing or could be doing. Next, please. Okay, these are the things, the typology of initiatives or entry points of CB or PBE in education. There are many more points. I think uh, I will not go to the detail of all these things. These are the very common and you will find all these things in different uh, studies and uh, observations made by the GOs and NGOs. Uh, nationally and internationally. So next please. Okay, so uh, I will go for the PBE school program at international level, please, next. <clears throat> so in regards to the school programs at international levels, uh, UNESCO uh, has developed two key resources, you see. So one is the teacher guide and another one is guide for policymakers. These are the Two key resources developed by UNESCO. This is very useful. Uh, it is uh, prepared in 2016 and 17. So, in addition, UNESCO also uh, helping countries deliver education programs that help build learners' resilience to violent extremism. So, another one is policies, teacher, and educational contents. Uh, that, that means strengthen the capacities of policies teacher and educational contents, okay. uh, which includes the equipping learners with uh, knowledge, values, attitude, and behavior. This is very important. Huh? Uh, equipping learners of all ages 
with the knowledge, values, attitude, and behaviors. Okay. OSC has also produced uh, guidelines for educators, and Council of Europe has also produced a training pack for teachers, huh? which uh, promotes the teaching controversial issues through education. These are the uh, initiative uh, done by UNESCO. I think uh, all these initiatives are very useful uh, and uh, applicable to most of the country. So next. <clears throat> so there are how education can contribute towards preventing violence extremism and address push and pull factors of violent extremism. So these are the seven factors uh, that the mentions. One is curriculum, textbooks, and pedagogical approach. These are the most important issues in regards to addressing push and pull factors of violent extremism in school education. Uh, curriculum is the main things. Uh, so that's why curriculum, textbooks, and pedagogical issues need to be uh, addressed uh, with uh, multiple viewpoints and develop critical thinking. Teachers, they are the key persons. So to represent a diverse range of social and ethnic groups and differing views within a society. School and educational institutions. Uh, school can play an important role uh, to, uh, for uh, developing a critical inquiry from a perspective of respect because critical inquiry is very important because so inquiry and critical inquiry uh, uh, is very important from a perspective of respect, interpersonal, uh, cultural understanding, tolerance and harmony and engage with the community. So children and young people, uh, school also can involve children and young people uh, as individuals with their opinions, needs, and aspirations. Next. And safe place. Uh, school should be the safe place to discuss different opinions and safe environment to learn new ideas and skills. Because where there is a uh, disagreement, uh, uh, so, there is an, there should be an arrangement to promote the disagreement. Disagreement is the beauty of Islam also. So that's why uh, the, the school should be the safe place. And access, access to education should be universal in regards to the socioeconomic status and in regards to the gender, ethnicity, and lang or language, it should be access for universal. And uh, ass uh, assessing the risk and protecting education actors. So, these are the seven factors, uh, uh, sorry, seven issues uh, uh, um, uh, we can address the uh, issues for, uh, and that can contribute uh, towards preventing uh, violent extremism in school, curriculum, school education. Next. So there are several initiatives done by the international agencies and organizations. I think all of you are aware I will not go for the detail, particularly just mentioning that the ICN, International Civil Society Action Network, they, uh, have, a, they have done a good job in regards to the school education, uh, promoting, uh, um, uh, promoting the moderation and uh, preventing uh, <laughs> extremist, uh, violence extremism. These are the issue, all these things related to the uh, educational, uh, different aspects of education. Next. And these are also the same things. Another Denmark is another uh, authority. Uh, they also uh, they, they, they fixed a part of national curriculum, human rights, a fixed part of the national curriculum, social studies subjects, and compulsory subjects. And these are these are also included in this teamwork. Uh, how they uh, uh, introduce uh, preventive uh, measures. Uh, in the school curriculum, these are the, some issues mentioned here. The next, <clears throat> in Australia, they have also uh, did a good job, I think so. Next, please. I am focusing in Bangladesh next. Oh, okay, these are the Bangladesh. I think in case of Bangladesh, all of you are aware that uh, uh, extremism in Bangladesh actually uh, thousands, thousand Bangladeshi fought in Soviet Afghan war during. Mm -hmm. 1980s. The report says that uh, the returnees from the war from the first Islamic militant groups in Bangladesh, including uh, Huzi and JMB, these terrorist outlets carried out a number of attacks in the country since 1999.
Bangladesh witnesses uh, sporadic attacks in, uh, inspired by Al Qaeda between 2002 to 2006. At least 12 secular bloggers and activists were killed from 2013 to 2016. Okay, next. And the grenade attack was taking place in uh, uh, Aurelia of Awa on 21st August 2009. It looks the lives of 24 people and more than 30 people were injured. Farqat al Jihad claimed the responsibility for the attack. Okay, next. Next. In 2015, a series of blast incident was happened that took two lives and injured more than 100 people. JMB claimed the responsibility of this attack, and this attack uh, made in 63 districts at the same time. Uh, the country? These are the major, it's okay. So next. So these are the major uh, uh, violent, uh, oh, another yeah, one, sorry. Great. Holy art is the last yeah. one. <laughs> and big action. Holy art is an Bakary terror attack. So, on the night of 1st July 2000, sorry. Okay. On the night of 1st July 2016, five militants kept 40 people as hostages. The casualties were the death of more than 29 people, including the asylums. Islamic states claim the responsibility of this attack. These are the uh, and next. Okay. So now, so Bangladesh initiative regarding PBE. So there are some uh, job made by these things, reviewing religious education curriculum for rooting out extremist elements, CB messaging through producing documentaries, short films and advertisement in print and electronic media, monitoring and counseling of the students through large number, uh, large involvement with the educational institution, encouraging the youth to take part in the sports and extracurricular activities for uh, channeling the energy into creative and constructive activities, monitoring the activities of terrorist online and preventing cyber radicalization. Mm -hmm. So uh, these initiatives made by the GOs and some NGOs also working in that, that line. Next, please. <clears throat> so government also uh, empowered the clerics, imams, and other community leaders to speak out against militancy. Yeah. Even uh, I've seen the Juma prayer, uh, it's also yeah. Islamic foundation instructed the Imam, that means religion, uh, religious leader, Imam, eh? how to formulate it, khutbah in weekly uh, Juma prayer. Eh? These are the, uh, this is the great initiative. Even in Was Mafil and other uh, uh, areas. Okay, next please. Okay, so there are survey. Uh, in related, not uh, directly related to this uh, PD, but uh, uh, there is a good findings in this regard. We can, uh, in the Daily Star report, the survey, the survey report among years published by the Daily Star in 2019 shows the vulnerability of being militant has been more, has been more among modern educated students than mother's educated ones. Mm -hmm. These are the findings. Uh, and uh, survey made by the Daily Star. So it is also found the limited knowledge of religion offers the chance to the malice to abuse and indoctrinate of militancy. So these are the two major findings. And another survey made by the people IT and BIIT um, uh, in cooperation with the uh, uh, University of uh, Virginia. So we have conducted a survey among uh, 3,500 students. So over the country, uh, mm -hmm. in regards to uh, even uh, students, guardian, teachers of secondary and university level across the country in 2018. Even there is an, another report in 2019. Uh, also, we, we made the similar study. The study shows that about 86% students have religiosity really or spirituality mind. Around 73% have empathy, and nearly 61 have moral reasoning capability. So these are the general findings uh, among our students. Okay, next. Now I'm going to the uh, National Education Policy 2010. 
So how national education policy deal with these things? So the, uh, you see that uh, there are several issues. However, I, I need to mention these things. The primary objective of this policy are directed towards the cultivation of human values. These are the things, primary objective of this policy are directed to the cultivation of human values. It seeks to the prescribed way through which citizens can be groomed to become leaders in pro people development programs and progress of society. There are, uh, and uh, there's another thing, so these uh, objectives, who have respect for their own religion, uh, okay, and uh, for other faith education will help them to grow up as non-communal, patriotic, and efficient person free from uh, superstitions. And there are uh, a lot of things. Okay, next, please. I will not go to the detail. Okay, however, through these things, I just mentioned that uh, in policy, the aims, objectives, uh, goals, and principles of education policy, I think uh, it appreciates the uh, preventive measures of uh, violent extremism because all these good words and uh, uh, focusing issues uh, uh, address the preventive uh, measures. So, uh, preventive measures uh, of violent extremism. So, these are the uh, issues related to the education policy. Next. So I'll just focus that uh, few textbooks content. Here are textbook contents. So you see the Bangladesh and Global Studies, class four. So these are the content, you see. And there are the issues tolerance and uh, balance and behavior and other uh, few things. These are the... Yes. They work very hard. Uh, sorry. Uh, these are particularly five. Number five, uh, uh, four, five, and six. Four, five, and six. Four, that means the rights of citizens. Uh, and then five, values and behavior. And six, tolerance. This particularly three issues, uh, I think, promote the violent, preventive violent extremism in different ways. These are the content. Not go to the details. They are the okay. Next, <clears throat> these are the class uh, four, and this subject is class five. These books, Bangladesh and Global Studies. Similarly, you see that uh, there are human rights issues, gender equality, duties and responsibility. Yes, uh, and uh, democratic attitude and ethnic groups in Bangladesh. Uh, they are the promoting these things. So. Uh, particularly Garo and other ethnic groups, uh, is, uh, this covers in this content. So I think uh, this, uh, this can promote the prevent PVE in the textbooks in some ways. Okay, next. How many slides are there? No, no, next. <clears throat> okay. Okay, these are the class eight. Okay, I'll not go to the detail. There are some issues. <laughs> I go to the uh, another issues. There is also uh, some issues in related to the uh, offense and other things. So next, please. Uh, these are the religious and moral education textbooks. This also promotes some ways. Uh, there's another book, eh? uh, to impart proper and quality religious and moral education by radicalizing the existing system. Uh, this is also promoting, I think, in some ways, uh, religious and moral education textbooks, also promoting the TV in the textbooks in some ways. Okay, next. Uh, these are the the weakness no section chapters are included in the textbooks on terrorism, particularly in some ways, in different ways, these are the things, but uh, particularly there can be a separate uh, section and sub chapter, it can be incorporated there. And uh, particularly, no evaluation criteria for measuring students' understanding and belonging to these are the major drawbacks. Uh, no evaluation system is not mentioned in the curriculum procedure. These are the textbook, but there is uh, nothing in evaluation section. In even in pedagogy, no section. Uh, pedagogy uh, policy is not clear. Uh, even uh, evaluation policy is not clear, and lack of proper guidance and techniques to deal with extreme ideas for the students. So next, okay. So however, there are some recommendations. Uh, uh, I want to share with you. First one, the 
on full implementation of UNESCO's plan of action. These are the important things because UNESCO uh, has uh, made a lot of plans of actions. This should be incorporated. And another one is introducing PB studies in national curriculum 2021. I think all of you are aware that in, uh, government has uh, adopted a national curriculum 2021 to be in implemented in 2023. But PB studies is not introduced there specifically. So there is the time, is the time to introduce PB studies in national curriculum. Adopt. Uh, still, it is in top level. So we can uh, push the government to uh, introduce the strategy in, the, in their curriculum, uh, uh, curriculum. And offering research to review the school curriculum in line with PB strategy. We saw that different Australia, German, and few other countries, they have, uh, uh, they uh, did a good job, particularly research on curriculum aspects. Each and every textbook, history books, social studies books, they have reviewed. And particularly, they have uh, identified the drawbacks, weakness, and they have suggested uh, how can it can improve there. But in Bangladesh, still, there is, uh, so far I know, so no research uh, has been done. So on the curriculum in line with the implementing, but introducing strategies of PBE. So it should be introduced by offering research. We should uh, offer. Uh, and grant offer uh, for doing research in that line. Introducing separate subjects, religious studies and moral subjects. In Bangladesh, there's one subject, religious and moral studies with 100 numbers. But actually there should be, uh, uh, as uh, only 100 subjects, even, even there is no arrangement of evaluation. Final exam is just only continuous assessment in the classroom, but final assessment for final examination uh, is not measured by these subjects. That's why it's not important that uh, students and teachers, uh, this subject is not uh, uh, get much importance. No, no, in final That's why I suggest the separate, introducing separate subjects in that level so that values, that means thematic values for preventive uh, 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 measures that can be incorporated there. And another one is rewriting the text, especially history, Bangladesh and global studies, and religious and moral education subject uh, can be rewrite in line with the PBE studies. Offering teachers training courses, PBE module. It is very important because teacher is the key person, they're the role model. That's why they should be oriented with the uh, 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 PBE module. And finally, introducing integrated critical pedagogy as subject submitted by the research to NIAM. In NIAM, I have, uh, I have submitted, uh, I, have, uh, I have done a research work uh, under NIAM with the finance of Ministry of Education. And there I have uh, proposed an integrated uh, critical pedagogy with promoting critical thinking and diversity, interacting each other and engaging on students so, so that they can uh, interact with each other. This integrative, integrated critical pedagogy is uh, uh, accepted by the NIAM. And if it is implemented, by school level, this will be very useful. Even now, right now, I am conducting another research, uh, the Ministry of Finance, uh, uh, sponsored by Finance Ministry, uh, sorry, Education Ministry, under the NIAM, I am the team leader of this project. This is uh, also the efficacy of religious and moral education subjects. So this is a uh, ongoing project and coming June, it will be finished. And through this project, I think uh, one uh, book will be uh, uh, revised and we can uh, suggest uh, some issues in line with the uh, violent activism in school education. These are the things. Uh, so with these things, uh, I would like to conclude my, <laughs> my presentations. Uh, I've already failed my time, I think so. So sorry for this inconvenience. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. There are some questions on the chat. Uh, so friends, uh, I'm very sorry because I become terrorist right now because I'm stopping all the good people who are delivering good speech, suggestion. Uh, so uh, I would request a question from chat because time is very limited. 
So I, I would take five five uh, questions, right, sister? Five Even questions. Right yeah. I uh, Sahazad Hussain. So no. You have too many actually uh, discussion. Then why you will offer only five questions? You should actually offer more questions because we really want to know True. some clarifications. Because I think some of the actually discussion was not in line uh, in relating to our country perspective. So I really actually um, uh, be happy if Stop. some more questions are actually allowed. Okay, opportunity for him, but not too long. Hmm. Okay, what is that? Okay. So I tried several times, but not working. This one. I don't know. It's so difficult. Uh, can somebody? Uh, where is the question? I can yes. operate. Yeah. Uh, this, this one. Yeah. On the right. On the right. Yeah. This one. Yeah. 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 Salam Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There, there are no questions. No questions. Social political science. Sit No question. Just obey. Okay. Okay. Listen and obey. Then you give an opportunity for him to take okay. No, let them come. I mean, still, a lot of, of A's and uh, chats are earlier. Okay. Yeah, uh, While you were there, I asked him. Yeah, uh, so I would request all of you to raise your question, whatever you in your mind. But we will take we'll take five or six questions because no, 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 too much. Just three question. One let him speak. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Yeah, Manuzur, Manuzur, yes. Manuzur, <laughs> Alam, bhai, Ji, thank you. Um, Assalamualaikum, uh, everyone. Actually, um, I'm from Bangladesh and I was uh, actually visited uh, Indonesia once, uh, even meeting with um, Irfan and Mifta. So I have some actually um, cultural uh, knowledge and experiences regarding Indonesia and Bangladesh and also uh, Definitely India. Uh, my question is my Bangladeshi friend who actually uh, represent on behalf of uh, Film for Peace Foundation. And uh, uh, I was actually wondering when he was actually remarking in a way like um, the Union Purisho don't have enough, uh, even he was just uh, actually citing like Union Purisho don't have a uh, playground for uh, cultural activities, which was actually astonishing me because uh, in our country, the um, urban areas uh, are actually struggling to actually find some uh, suitable places for uh, uh, play or do some extracurricular activities. But, but in the rural sector- Let us be specific. Let us be specific. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I, just, I just want to know from that person, uh, did he has any actually research or any evidence from where he actually uh, mentioned that the uh, rural areas don't have this enough space for the play? Can you... Yeah, come here. Come here. Come here. I mean, uh, the process will take a long time. You can just uh, you can relay. No, no, please come, come down, come down, come down. Okay. Okay, he's the right person. <laughs> he does a more participant online than in here. Fact, in, fact, in cities, we don't have fields. In villages, <laughs> there are. Thank you, Manjur, uh, for your uh, important questions. Basically, uh, this, uh, this uh, information and slides from our field activities, we work in Cox's Bazaar, 
and this is from the Ukiya. We, we found that in, in Upajala level, there is only one playground for the union uh, level. There is no playground for the, for, the, for the youth and the kids. So that's why we raised this question. So this is also uh, that this is not for all the union of the village in the country, but that is happening in the country that now we are not promoting our playground in the union level. So that, that is the, I'm not uh, making like that in Bangladesh, there is in the village, there is no playground. But in particular, that is government and the union for, uh, council level, all the uh, uh, grassroots level. We are not now emphasizing the importance of playground in the, the field level. Thank you so much. Very no funny, question. very funny. No other question. Yes. If anyone would like to have questions. Yeah, I, now I would request uh, uh, gathering. If you have, uh, Rashid Bhai, you have so many questions. So please raise your questions. Thank you very much for giving me to speak some, some words. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my sister, Ruby uh, Philippa, and Alia, and my most respected teacher. First of all, I should congratulate the organizers to organize this very important meeting, this present world. A uh, very turmoil situation is going on. So, this initiative can help reduce some terrorism and violence. My first point here, actually, uh, many men, many minds, many people, many opinions, and many faiths, many philosophies. So everybody speaks on the basis of this philosophy, the basis. So our opinion may vary. Apart from this, we must have uh, find out some criteria and some formula and some uh, rules and regulations we should believe and accept uh, to give dignity and rights of human beings. So I am only one philosophy, you do not believe. So I, sh I should not hate you. Yeah. I should not suppress you. I should not uh, destroy you, demolish you, or I should not get you out from this room. So first of all, we must have commitment for the truthfulness and, and for the uh, ideology which is very common and universal. Very common and universal which protects dignity and rights of human beings and other creations of this universe. This is the first rule we should accept. Otherwise, the Muslims of Uyghur are being tortured and killed. Nobody is raising points. In Syria, people are being killed. Thousands of people. Uh, in Kashmir, human rights are being violated. So no media is raising points. At least we should have respect and and sympathy and empathy for them. They are human beings. They may have. They are human beings, but they are Muslims. That's the problem. Okay. They, they may be Muslim, but they are human beings. We must accept it. They may have some feelings, emotions to write, to survive. So we do not accept them as human beings. So this should not be a philosophy. First of all, I should, I defy and deny this sort of inhuman philosophy. So I should, this dignified people, we are working here, thinking, giving time. We have referred, we have deployed a lot of times, energy and merit here. So this very, we should, we should accept this fundamental points. So this initiative, are really noble. But behind this, behind this agenda, who are being benefited by this? So I know 
I should accept the reality as well. Uh, from where, on what soil I'm speaking, I should know the environment yeah. and the ruling people. The actual ruling people, rulers, dominates and control everything. So considering their views and attitude, we should speak and we should proceed gradually. So very important, very, very important points are discussed here, but we should mean it and we should implement it. So moderate Islam, Islam is Islam, no moderate, no moderate Islam. This is fact. But there are some people, some scholars, they may have some their own and individual interpretation. We should not accept it. Which may lead towards violence and terrorism. We should not accept it. So actually, it's not, Allah says, Allah advised us to follow the middle point. Time, so time is very, very I'm over. Uh, time is finished. So so these sort of things we may think, we may take into our consideration. Uh, with that, I just, uh, that means I respect everybody and with all and respect, I'd like to request you to take my points into our consideration. That's it. That's all I'm Thank you, Sayus Bhai. Sayus Bhai, Rasid Bhai. Now, uh, we have only two and a half minutes if uh, from speakers want to say more something within one and or two and a half minutes half minutes aziz bhai aziz bhai the only please two and a half minutes professor anisus zama sahib we have only two and a half minutes left two minutes left right now so if you want to share anything within one minute just half minutes Half minutes. Half minutes. <laughs> do I need for to go? Do I need to go there? For her, for him first. Okay. Okay. So, I took water of the second problem. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, actually, I would like to appreciate this initiative. Uh, um, for uh, especially Antur and Aman for organizing this event, uh, event. I think it's a good beginning, uh, particularly in regards to Bangladesh initiatives. I think uh, this session can uh, contribute uh, and strengthen the Bangladesh initiative future. Okay. Uh, uh, with these few words, I, I again, thank you organizers and especially the chairman of uh, Aman, uh, uh, respected uh, Imranul Haq Chaudhuri, uh, and, and Ruby Khalifa, and also our uh, respected professor uh, Anisud Jaman, who is available uh, in such initiatives in every corner at two minutes. Thank Good. you. So Thank you. Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So now uh, the Professor, Me? Yes. but a half minute. Half minute. <laughs> really? Because <laughs> people are hungry in Indonesia. Yes, sure. <coughs> Brothers, right. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Brothers and sisters, I must thank the organizer of this seminar, especially Mr. Choudhury, and more especially Mohyuddin and Sohel, who really informed of this of this event and thereby could take part in this. I have learned a lot of things, but still I see that my very beloved Rashid Zaman is not happy with the use of moderate Islam. He is, <laughs> I, I, discussion. <laughs> I, I understand his spirit and from that spirit I agree with him. There is no contradiction between moderate Islam and Islam as such. Since since Ruby Khalifa, you know, our one part of our name is Khalifa, that she represents us all. Allah has sent us as Khalifa. So, so, <laughs> and Khalifa is behind me, so I cannot prolong my space. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for arranging such a timely topic. We need to elaborate on this and need to reach the people. 
We are happy people, we are in peace, but there are many people who are in troubles. We must take this message to them. Thank and you. this not be centered around cities. We must go to distant villages. Okay. Thank you. But that is a challenging, challenging task, but we must take that upon our shoulders. Thank you once again. Assalamu alaikum. Are we finishing it? I think we are finishing it. Just closing okay half minute yeah okay thank you very much i'm really happy with this discussion and thank you for the organizer the people from Antor eh? and aman this is i think very good initiative and i think we have to conduct this kind of discussion not only today yeah? because uh, i didn't know that actually there is terrorism also in bangladesh but this is very good i'm learning I'm learning from this meeting the initiative that the Bangladeshi people have done. And I'm really learning from you. And this is really a good, how to say, opportunity for me to meet you, to know you, and also to learn from you. And this is, I think, very useful, uh, initial, very useful meeting. And I hope our communication and our friendship will not end just today, but we can still continue and work together and also sharing. Thank you. So that's a question. Yes, half an hour? Yes, I will give this one. This is the last time I... Yeah, and then... We are all civil really persons. He's from military background. I know, I know, but this is beyond my power. Who are Okay. Brother, use Thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's a wonderful session. <laughs> I learned a lot. It is really uh, a timely and very required subject matter. Not for Bangladesh only, for the whole, I mean, I mean, the global systems. It is corrupting everything. Silence is very dangerous in this case. You've got to be active. And we cannot be reactive also. we got to be proactive. So whatever actions um, um, Aman Indonesia is taking, uh, Antar is taking, and Right Track is taking, is good. And today I have heard wonderful presentations from Alia and seen the organizing capacity of Sister um, uh, Khalifa. And then if they, and including Mr. Imran, uh, really invites me anytime to carry the bag, I'll be readily, readily available. Just one uh, is, the thing is, everything has got different perspectives. The text and context are not you have to read the text against a context. The Bangladeshi context is different than the context of Iraq, yeah. the context of uh, 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 Palestine, the context of Indonesia. So you got to read it against the text, uh, must be read against the context of our people's culture, habit, education, tradition, all those things. I think a, a lot of things to speak and sort out Yes. And this is a start. Um, it should continue. I have been. Mm -hmm. I have. I have visited uh, Bandung and um, uh, yeah, Java, and then um, um, uh, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, in relation to yeah. such uh, uh, measures, yeah. uh, I think if you have extended your hands up to Dhaka, we'll be happy. We are very happy. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, One thing I should say, I'm not moderate. <laughs> okay. Okay. I know this. This is not in, always not enough. Discussing about our challenges that we are facing in our community. I'm very happy that today we are opening up uh, the early discussion about this, and hopefully we can continue for more deeper and more specific uh, context because there are a lot of things to be explored in Bangladesh yeah. or also uh, Indonesia and some uh, other countries uh, else. I'm not going to conclude, but I am going to invite Dr. Amelia to give a closing uh, remark uh, for this yeah. event. Uh, Dr. Amelia, screen is yours. Um, <clears throat> thanks so much, um, uh, Ruby, for the invitation and the time. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, uh, peace be upon you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be here to meet some of you. I'm actually very excited to see some old faces, uh, but I 
couldn't see them. <laughs> Unfortunately, brother Imran um, and uh, who else from um, uh, Antar. Um, yeah. Um, I wouldn't speak um, um, like um, conclude what uh, we have discussed because I'm sorry I'm not really well and I just attend two last presentation and I'm very delighted to see the dynamics and the discussion that uh, you had today. Um, um, so first I'm grateful that Aman International, Aman Indonesia and Antar Bangladesh continue to discuss this um, effort, this uh, PVE and especially how to uh, use education to um, to do uh, many works and initiative for the PVE. Um, I just want to give one or two notes uh, reflecting on the discussion that you had, especially for the two um, presentation that I saw. Um, uh, we sit here thinking about how to deal with the PVE preventing violent extremism. And I can see from the case of Bangladesh and also from, of course, Indonesia, because I'm a historian of Indonesia, um, the national dynamics provide impact to the intolerance and radicalism in both Bangladesh and Indonesia. So politics provide um, uh, increase of intolerance. Um, this is uh, what I can see clearly from Indonesia case. Um, for example, uh, in the case of the election of the Jakarta governor, for example, a few years ago, because of this kind of uh, political uh, competition and then the intolerance uh, increase. But politics can also become a way to uh, decrease the intolerance. For example, uh, in Indonesia, uh, uh, after the election of um, presidential election, uh, President Jokowi, the winner, also recruit the, the, his challenger, um, uh, Mr. Prabowo, to become part of the government. So the, the increase um, uh, the, uh, the hot debate, for example, becoming decreased and decreased. I'm saying that the national dynamics uh, should become important um, um, context that we need to deal with uh, in looking solution for the PPE. Um, going into the education, everyone agree. I'm, I'm sure that we have today a very good um, session and then speakers. Um, we all agree that education is one uh, of crucial uh, aspect or sector for the intervention to decrease the intolerance. Um, I think uh, our brother Atik Tapipin and Dr. Abdul Aziz presentation clearly uh, ex um, show this. There are already good efforts. Um, but then when I um, uh, realized that sometimes um, um, uh, our um, actors yeah, from, from civil society organization have different um, understanding on what should be, uh, what should be uh, done for the initiative for the um, inclusive education. Because sometimes, um, for example, for Mr. Atik Apipin, um, one of the main uh, problem uh, for, the, for the not inclusive uh, education is, uh, according to the research, is from the teacher, right? That's why you are doing um, initiative to have many uh, 
program training for the teacher and deal with curriculum. I think Dr. Abdul Aziz also provide how the Bangladesh um, um, initiative deal with the curriculum. But then, um, do we have a question? Do we have already uh, analysis or evaluate how far had we go? How effective our strategy? Um, and then, uh, um, do we, uh, um, how we deal with the challenge? So I think we still have a big problem uh, related to inclusive education. This is why Aman uh, and Antar uh, hold this um, uh, meeting, discussion. Um, I think uh, one important aspect that from the discussion uh, that uh, you already got is um, like exchange experience and good practices um, and increase the awareness uh, about the PVE and inclusive education and then um, understanding obstacle and challenge uh, and also the last one for this to seek potential future collaboration. Um, I know that for example, the way we deal with, uh, for example, inclusive education um, among not only students, teachers, it raises a question, uh, how we understand whether such a norm, for example, it is inclusive, inclusive or not inclusive. Uh, so sometimes people who used to uh, deal with the situation every day uh, doing harassment, for example, if this become a norm and then people think that it is a norm, it, it is not a problem at all. So this is a very big challenge to uh, make uh, our community and ourselves and also actors uh, among us to uh, understand the situation. And then um, to me, this uh, meeting is a very, very good initiative. Uh, I think uh, Aman, uh, from long, long years ago, uh, have been like the, how many years, uh, deal with this situation. I think the last meeting I attended in, uh, in Thailand, I think, also talking about the inclusive uh, um, education and how to deal with the PVE. So I hope uh, this uh, discussion will... Um, we, we can learn uh, about our own strategy and then uh, we can uh, strengthen our uh, collaboration. Uh, synergy, I think it's very important um, for especially two countries, yeah, to uh, civil society organization in Indonesia and Bangladesh and beyond um, to uh, stick together and then to do more action. I think the name Aman, Asian Muslim Action Network, is really, um, we have a kind of um, uh, understanding that we need to do action. Um, uh, we still have uh, many problems. Uh, for example, even the meaning, <laughs> understanding of moderation. I think that's very important, uh, nice uh, discussion that you had. Um, I agree that in Indonesia, maybe some of us like um, uh, taken for granted for this term moderation, but at least there is a way. Uh, if there is a pro and cons, I think it's good that uh, there is a way to do, um, like to fit, uh, to find the um, foundation for the understanding of moderation. Um, so it is good to have discussion. And I congratulate um, Aman, Antar, and uh, you all of the uh, participant of this uh, meeting, especially uh, Ruby, uh, for the success of this uh, 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 discussion. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, that's all for me. Um, thanks, thank you so much for all who participate. Um, we wish. Um, uh, in the near future, we can um, continue this uh, discussion and meetings, uh, maybe in Jakarta, Malaysia, and many other places uh, uh, in Asia. Thank you so much for the time. Um, uh, 
bless for everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you so much, Dr. Amelia Fauzia, the Vice President of Aman International. So with that, I have to close <laughs> our uh, session and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you again in our regional dialogue on PVE and looking for other countries uh, dealing with this uh, issue. Thank you so much for all the speakers, uh, the moderators and also uh, participants and some teachers here joining with us and uh, safe, uh, um, uh, 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 stay and safe and also healthy. Bye everyone. Salam alaikum. Thank you, Barubi. Thank you, everyone.